Hey there, folks, and welcome back to the Rome Campaign. Last time we launched a surprise second invasion upon Egypt while they were distracted by wars in Anatolia, and we had the good martial leadership of my consul, Rusus, to help us out. With his support, we managed to sack thousands of gold from the Egyptian cities, took dozens of slaves, and just pretty badly beat up the Egyptian corps once again, fairly unopposed, so that was pretty good. We also uh, kicked Egypt out of Greece once and for all. We seized their directly held territory of Sycian. We took the territory of their ally, Pelene, took the territory of their client, uh, Andros, and uh, transferred o uh, overlordship of their client, Crete, to ourselves. Crete, by the way, is pretty on board with this new situation. They like us a lot, thanks to all of our modifiers we've got, and we're improving relations with them. So, assuming this doesn't change a lot, once we reach the 10-year uh, cooldown of us taking them on as a client, we can integrate them, which will be quite nice. And that should be the final ending point of my Greek conquests uh, in this campaign. We'll own everything at that point in Greece. Speaking of which, after the war with Egypt, we then went to war with the cursed Athens-Spartan alliance and their allies. We seized their territory in a kind of complicated war, given just the small size of everything. You'd think this would have been easier, but the Gordian knot is tough to cut through sometimes. But ultimately, this worked out pretty well, and we have ourselves uh, quite a bit more territory. What's left in Greece now, at least for our mission tree, is the Arcadians. We've got the Stymphalians over here in Arcadia, Epidauros, and Troizen. And uh, over here, not part of our mission tree, but it, part of Greece, we've got the Cyclades held by the Nesuitic League. Both of these uh, individual sort of groups, the Arcadians, are all teamed up together. They're in a shared defensive league with each other, and they're all allied together. And then the, uh, the, Cy the Cycladics with the Nesuitic League are allied to some regional Asians, so people from the region of Asia, namely uh, Miletos and Kos. Not too worried about that. In the course of this episode, I'm hoping to sort of wrap up things with our conquests in Greece and finally kind of get this whole thing over with. Now, in terms of our mission tree, um, we need to get the Peloponnesian campaign next, which just requires finally owning the Arcadia uh, province, which we will hopefully be able to get to very soon here. And this should hopefully be fairly straightforward as we're just fighting against a couple of uh, small tags all next to each other. Now, also speaking sort of broader geopolitically, there's a bit of a shift happening in the Eastern Mediterranean I wanted to talk about here, which is the decline of the Ptolemaics, thanks in part to my repeated attacks on their core, and the return of the Seleucids. Now, we're still not exactly ourselves in the Eastern Mediterranean. I don't really want to go any further east than Greece at the minute in terms of directly owned territory. I want to actually consolidate my territory more in the Western Mediterranean after all the effort I've put in to the east and conquering Greece and whatnot. What I really want is a mission tree after this one that uh, sends me into Cisalpine Gaul, or perhaps I'll do the one that sends me into Africa. We'll see what makes sense for the time once we get there. But my aims of conquering eastward for now are no longer going to be continued upon beyond just the stuff we've, uh, we're working on right now. Either way, though, the Ptolemaics, who once, uh, about 20 years ago, were a serious existential threat to our campaign and seemed to be kind of in a position where they weren't beatable by anybody because we attacked them when they were their most vulnerable and really damaged their core. Then in the follow-up war, we attacked them when they were only in one war that time, but we still managed to sort of get away with it. The Ptolemaics have been declining, and their territorial gains in Anatolia are kind of vulnerable right now. Obviously, we forced them to release South Phoenicia and Apamene, so that hasn't helped their situation here in terms of territorial cohesion. But these exclaves that are now stuck in this newly conquered Seleucid land are very vulnerable to a Seleucid occupation. The Seleucids don't have a truce with them, and I think either side could attack the other at will. I think the Seleucids probably should and probably will attack the Ptolemaics sooner or later, given the vulnerability here. The Ptolemaics' ability to reinforce these pockets is pretty minimal. They have one port over here. They can uh, drop their troops off from the Nile areas using their, their navy up here. So they can move their armies into the area, but the Seleucids own all this territory around that, and so that could be kind of complicated to reach these exclaves. And this big territory that they just conquered uh, recently in Anatolia isn't even reachable easily by sea. They may be able to move through perhaps some of their clients, or maybe they can just punch through Seleucid own land, but this will be tough to reinforce and protect, and these Black Sea ports up here that they own won't really help them too much either. Ultimately, the Seleucids are in a really good position to basically brute force their way back into hegemony in Anatolia. Now, 
I continue to think that the Ptolemaics are a good target for me to attack whenever there's a good opportunity and sack their core, as it's very easy to reach this area by sea for me. However, that doesn't mean that I necessarily am going to be 100% anti-Ptolemaic in every situation. And uh, because I can't uh, create or guarantee a kind of patchwork set of states in Anatolia and the Near East to fight each other and stay distracted while I am not in a position to conquer it directly, what I don't want to have happen is for one of the successor states, either the Ptolemaics or the Seleucids, to be one unified empire owning everything and getting the whole place ready to, to defend against my eventual conquest of the area. So because I can't guarantee a kind of you know Greek-style Gordian knot situation with a bunch of different nations that are all holding each other in place, the best thing I can do is maintain, or do my best to help maintain, a duopoly at the at the worst between the Ptolemaics and the Seleucids. At the minute, the Ptolemaics seem to be on the decline with the Seleucids on the rise, but their actual power comparison is sort of hard to tell. In terms of territorial size, they're similar. Seleucids have more overall population, but we don't know who's integrated what cultures, so we have no idea what their actual numbers are compared to the Egyptians. I suspect the Egyptians have integrated at least the Memphites, at least they should have done that if they haven't done that yet. So who knows what their numbers are, and both can also draw upon mercenaries and whatnot, so it's sort of hard to tell. But these two are of similar power levels, and they're both technically stronger than me in territorial size, but in terms of numbers, I actually have more population than both of them, and I have more Roman population than their own integrated cultures that are for sure integrated because of, of, their, of them being native cultures. So all that being said, I think that although I'm not in a position to directly compete with them as sort of a third way for the uh, Near East, uh, I am in a position to try to keep the balance here and keep one from winning completely over the other. If the Silly Kids sees the Ptolemaic stuff in Anatolia, that's okay as long as they don't go crazy from there. If they start pushing further south into the Canaan, Judea area, and the Ptolemaics aren't able to push them away, I may have to get involved on the side of the Ptolemaics, which would be a little bit bizarre. But what I really want to have happen is for neither side to fully and completely establish hegemony here before I can get here. I'm just not in a position to do that right now. This is too far east for me. It's too far from my core, too hard for me to reinforce. I have to attend to my own western holdings and, and consolidating my control over my west before I go this far east. And I just need these two great powers to sort of keep each other at bay from each other. And ultimately, um, if I can continue to sack the Ptolemaics uh, basically on cooldown, and whenever they're distracted, I don't have a truce with them, go in for another war like that and make a lot more money. That's awesome, but I don't want to do this at the expense of this duopoly that I need to see maintained in the East. So for the sake of the, I guess, stability of the world, I'm willing to forgo sacking Egypt as much as I could be in order so that they're not weakened too much to keep the Selly kids back. Alternatively, I could actually try to strengthen other foils for the Selly kids in other directions, perhaps Bactria, perhaps Armenia. I guess I don't know if Bactria is still a client of them, actually. If they are not, okay, that's good to see. Armenia, perhaps, would be a uh, someone that could help me out with this as well. Who knows exactly what's going to happen here. Also, the Dahe rising up could present someone that could foil the Selly kids, although they may be a danger to me in the future as well. We shall see. And with the Marian collapse probably happening kind of soon, this whole area is about to get a lot more complicated. So, all this to be said, I'm not necessarily trying to expand my own hegemony in the, this far east quite yet. This is beyond the scope of what we can do with our current territory, our current population, our current situation. However, I am keeping an eye on the east. And what I'm going to do is put both these guys onto my outliner so we can see if both or one of them goes to war and sort of keep track of what's going on with that. I think that's going to be good for us to keep an eye on, at least from afar. And eventually, once we're stronger and in a more consolidated position to invade the east and start trying to vie for Anatolia directly, we want to make sure that we're not coming into an area completely owned by either the Ptolemaics or the Seleucids, completely like sort of posted up and ready to defend against me. That's what I want to avoid ultimately by maintaining, you know, a shared power situation or a splintering in many different nations to the extent that I can achieve that. So that's the situation with the East. I just wanted to kind of note that here as I was thinking about this a lot between episodes. But back over to the Greece area, I want to take a sec to talk about because I have some notes here my plans for the different provinces of Greece. Now that I've nearly finished conquering Greece, I may as well talk about my plans here. Most of these provinces will be specialized in the same way that I've discussed earlier with these provinces, because I talked about it sort of informally last episode. But between episodes, I did take some notes and I did sort of decide what each province's purpose should ultimately be once I get to actually doing that. So let's go through the provinces of Greece. I'm noting, of course, that all these provinces, like with Macedonia, 
are not ready to be uh, sort of put off of uh, harsh treatment in most situations quite yet. So Epirus is going to be a manpower province in terms of resources. It's got some good resources, but nothing good enough to justify being a tax province or a research province. And ultimately, without any pirate havens, being a tax province doesn't make as much sense for a place with terrain this rough. So manpower will be coming from Epirus. Aetolia, though, will be a tax province because it uh, has a opium tile. Opium is very rare, and it's going to be quite a good resource to get a surplus of, even internally for myself. We have opium as well in Beatia, so we can potentially get some extra slaves into Therium as a city, which uh, I believe it's not a city yet, but I will make it a city. It's actually at its uh, full pop capacity. We are producing more opium from here, so we can establish an opium surplus if we haven't done that already. I don't remember if we did that last episode. I did not, so let me go ahead and make sure I, I do that in just a sec here. But whatever the case, Aetolia will be a tax province, both because of the opium and because of the marble here. Uh, these are all good resources to get extra slaves for, or to get uh, slave infrastructure for, I should say. Marble sells for a lot, so Aetolia will be a tax province. Beatia will also be a tax province, again, because of the opium, and it's got a lot of minerals, iron and stone, uh, base metals, uh, lots of good stuff to get some mines for. And just in general, these are good places to get some... Uh, slave estates for as well. So Beatia will be a tax province. Uboa will also be a tax province. It's got a pirate haven up here at this iron island of uh, Sicrus. Now I could make this a city to take full advantage of the pirate haven tax bonus for a big concentration of slaves and freemen. What I could do instead, what I will probably do, is have Sicrus actually be just a, a really full iron mine with the pirate haven boosting the tax outcome of the mine. So that's quite nice. There's also iron on this island. There's pearls, marble over here. Lots of good resources to get uh, mines and slaves for. So Uboa will be a tax province. Attica, as noted last time, will be a research province because of the numerous research bonuses for the Athene uh, tile. Now, I need to rebuild the city, and I missed my chance to get a free city from my mission tree, so that was a mistake. But it wasn't too expensive, and we, are, we do have the city under construction now, so that's quite nice going to be done um, middle of next year, so that's going to be good. And we're going to have this be a research province because of the strength of the city tile, and we can have a lot of uh, nobles and citizens in this province eventually. We may set up some iron mines over here. There are a number of iron locations, um, four in total, with these two islands and these two tiles. I don't know yet if that's worth it because iron doesn't sell for much, but we may just have villa estates over there. Now, one change I've decided between episodes is that Achaea, which I initially said might be a research province, I think I'm actually just going to have Achaea be a manpower province. Yes, the um, Temple of Zeus in Olympia does improve citizen happiness, and there's an argument for actually having um, Achaea be a tax province because of the, the citizen... Or, sorry, be a... Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I misspoke there. There was an argument for having it be a manpower province because citizens produce manpower, and that's why I'm going to go for manpower. What I meant to say a second ago, I got confused, was there's an argument for it being a tax province because there's a pirate haven in Corinthus. Now, Corinthus, as a hills tile, which we shouldn't forget, isn't actually a great location for a city. And although it's my capital at the minute, um, and I don't think I've made it a colonia or anything like that, and the mission that I have coming up here doesn't have the chance to make it a colonia, I don't actually necessarily need to keep my capital at Corinthus, and once I fully own Greece, this being a fort is no longer as important. Yes, it's in a great strategic location, but the circumstances where someone will be crossing this isthmus, but they're not from Greece, they're like landing, is kind of un... un I can't really think of what that would be, really. And if I don't have naval supremacy, I have bigger problems anyways, so this is good to keep the port at, probably, maybe. But even if I don't have a port here, ultimately, uh, Corinthus, as a pirate haven, could make for a great tax location with the earthenware. However, that being said, I ultimately think Achaea, the whole province, should be manpower focused because the um, citizen happiness in the province does help with manpower as citizens produce manpower. And in terms of resources, there is wood in the province so that helps with manpower. And the other resources here aren't great for a tax location. Again, iron, stone, and then the, the pirate haven make this a pretty solid tax province option, but I do think manpower is better because I actually don't have a lot of manpower provinces in total in Greece compared to my other regions because of how many research and tax things I have going on elsewise. So Achaea will be a manpower province once I get it specialized. Arcadia, which I only own parts of right now, I need to conquer the rest in this episode, will also be a manpower province. Now it does have some good tax resources like iron and whatnot, but really nothing too special here for tax, and there's no pirate havens here either, so this will just be a manpower province just so the region of Greece has more forces for its levy. 
Uh, Laconia, down in the south, will also be a manpower province. I didn't spot any manpower boosting stuff. Um, I guess technically Spartan infrastructure does add citizen happiness, so suppose that works for that. But this will be a manpower province. I will actually rebuild the city in Sparta. And in general, I've also changed my mind a bit on how harsh I've been on cities uh, in provinces that already have an established city. Honestly, coastal farmland is a good spot for a city, and many locations, unless there's like a reason, like it's like a gold mine or something where I wouldn't want there to not be settlement infrastructure, I probably should make these cities just to add more population capacity to the province ultimately. So I'm going to rebuild the cities in Messena and Sparta. I think I made a mistake demoting these and other places like that, um, and just have uh, more cities than I need just so I have the room for population capacity as I have a lot of pop growth bonuses. So I'm also going to rebuild the city that I demoted at Aeternum. I think that was also a mistake, so I'm gonna change my tyrannical ways a little bit with that and not be that flippant on city revocation going forward. So either way, Laconia will be a manpower province. Um, Cyclades, which I only own one tile within, will be a tax province. This is actually quite a good tax location because of the uh, resources. Believe it or not, there's, uh, let's see here, precious metals, there's base metals, there's marble, glass, silk, and more silk. So we can have some crazy tax islands out here in the Cyclades. So this will be a tax province. And then lastly, Crete will be a research province, as noted before, once I own it directly, which I don't at the minute. Palace of Nosos improved citizen and noble output by 20% in the whole province of Crete. This is gonna be a crazy research center in the future which is probably not anyone would have expected, but that's what the wonder does. That's how I'm going to use the province. So that is that with the Greece province and my plan specializations. I'll keep this notepad handy to look at in the future once I get to building, which I will do pretty soon. I have a lot of money saved up. First though, let's talk about our new government. We have the infamous year of Fabia Prima and Fabia Prima, and we've got the two Fabia Primas ready to go. Our first double female consulship Actually, our first female like main console ever so far. Fabia Prima, the elder, I suppose, is 59. She's a 2765, so sort of below average, but not terrible. Uh, although for martial purposes, definitely not great. In terms of her um, traits, she has the blood of the Cornelii, which results in extra infantry offense when uh, she's commanding the levy of Italia, and a 5% commerce income while she's the ruler. That's pretty good. She's also got the blood of the Fabii, which leads to extra heavy infantry defense, 10%, and AE change minus 0.02. Not actually sure if I've read this blood uh, trait yet, because the Fabii seems to be a pretty more, le a less uh, common family to be in the consulship, so I'll go ahead and read this here. After, at the founding of Rome, the, bro the followers of the brothers Romulus and Remus were called the Quintilii and the Fabii, respectively. The brothers were said to have offered up sacrifices in the cave of the Luperco. Actually, I think I did read this before, so yeah, never mind. Uh, she's also blunt, so one less charisma and reduced senate influence, and 25% reduced improved opinion maximum as the consul. Not so great. Uh, sometimes facts are just facts. She's just one more finesse um, as the governor of Italia, 0.01% civ change, and as the ruler, plus 0.02 stab change. That's pretty good. Fabia Prima has become almost legendary for her calm, unbiased opinions. She's chaste, which reduces her fertility, which doesn't really matter to me that much. Uh, Fabia Prima considers her body an unassailable temple of virtue and honor, so does everybody, everyone else. For its worth, by the way, her husband is Cosus Claudius, who I don't recognize as a previous character we've interacted with, and her child, I do recognize, is Manius Claudius, our tribute to the plebs, and quite a good governor candidate, thanks to his very high finesse. We may be making use of him as a governor in a sec, as both of these consuls are former governors of Magna Graecia and Macedonia, respectively. Come back to that in a second. She's also a polymath, which increases the research points in Italia by 10%. That's pretty good. And as the ruler, 2.50% research points across the board from everywhere as well. Uh, there are a few subjects upon which Fabia Prima could not wax lyrical. So pretty solid traits overall. Put her on a scheme of influence right away. Look at that PI. Whew. She's also got a co-consul, of course, also named Fabia Prima. Fabia Prima the Younger is objectively just better than Fabia Prima the Older in terms of stats. 9-10 at 2-5, so she's missing out on uh, at least balanced charisma and zeal, but where it counts the most for a leader, martial and finesse, Fabia Prima is bringing that with her. Right, so she is Blood of the Claudii, Blood of the Cornelii, and Blood of the Fabii. Wow, she's collected all the bloodlines in one body. That's crazy. No wonder she's so good. Uh, she's just as well. 
Uh, she's disciplined, ambitious, greedy, and a scholar. And she's also married to our Prefectus Militaris, Metius Valerius Lepidus. And she's got some children, uh, Valeria Prima and Proculus Valerius Lepidus, as her uh, daughter and son, respectively, for what that's worth. And in terms of the national effects, we're rocking a 9, 10, 6, 8 situation, which is okay. And I wouldn't necessarily go into any major wars in this uh, video or in this uh, consulship, thanks to the two marshal of my new Italian leader. But she can still lead the levies to victory just through sheer numbers. And we will be doing that in just a second against the remaining Arcadians. By the way, the next planned consulship is our former co-consul, the Optimatus party leader, Metius Cornelius Scipio, and Valeria Prima, who's our current censor. So that looks fine to me. Uh, aside from this, um, the Boni are again in power with the consulship, although the Optimatists have unexpectedly gained an enormous amount of seats. I don't know exactly what caused this, but the wolves are uh, growing their pack in a big way, up to 60% control. So we need to keep an eye on the Optimatus approval. Matters more than usual. Popularis, as usual, are down to just 9% control, but they are pretty okay with things. So hopefully things uh, stay stable in the Senate for now. And of course, with the Bonnie still in charge, we've had a couple of years now of Bonnie consulships. 15% reduced build costs and 10% reduced monthly wages. So that is pretty solid. Right. In terms of our government, I probably want to switch some of these people around. Um, Cornelia Secunda, thanks to her aging, seems to not be... Well, I think I have her in here because of her family, don't I? Any other Cornelii I could bring in instead that are not this bad? Not seeing anyone. The next one would be only three finesse. This guy could be a uh, oratory position, though. That would be okay. Hmm. May want to switch some of these around. Yeah, Fabia Secunda could be switched out, honestly. Let's scroll back up here. Yeah, I want to just... Uh, although this position is not that important. It's just health. So this is probably okay for now. Um, everyone's fairly loyal as well. Uh, Quintus Gergis, Quintus Fabius Gergis, the younger, I could also give him some free hands for more loyalty. Bonnie won't like this, but the Popularis will like this, and the Bonnie are super loyal, so let me go ahead and do just that. And then everyone else is looking fine. I could also give Cornelia Secunda some more loyalty. I think this is fine, though, honestly. I don't want to mess with this too much. Right, let's give her a character focus. Um, I think... Let me look at the national things. Yeah, I should improve Charisma or Zeal because the others are coming from the younger Fabia Prima. So let's go ahead and focus, I think, on probably Charisma for the extra Tyranny Reduction. Oratory Focus, just put her on to, I guess, Oration Focus. Sounds fine to me. Yeah. Okay, and then aside from that, we need some new Governors. All right, we need uh, Magna Gratia and Macedonia, two of my, probably the two next most important provinces after um, Italia. So over here in Magna Gratia, who do we have? We could put Rosas into this position, and I think I probably want to. This would give us, by the way, a good martial leader if we need that uh, in an emergency situation here. And uh, yeah, I think I've convinced myself that this is probably the, the way to go here. He's not super loyal though, which isn't great. Um, but once we make him a governor, hopefully he becomes super loyal. We also have a young character, Agrippa Fabius Lucanus, who we could use as well. This guy's an Optimatis. Um, only 9 finesse, uh, or rather, I should say only 5 marshal, but 9 finesse is good. He's pretty loyal. Let me make this guy the governor of Macedonia, and I'll make uh, Rusus the governor of Magna Gratia. 33 loyalty. Okay, so we're going to have some problems with Rusus. That's unfortunate. Come back to him later, though. First things first. All right. Agrippa Fabius Lucanus. Come on in. Probably have to spend all of our PI changing all the policies. Love that. What I will do, though, is select my omen now. I think for this five-year period, what I want to do is finally get the happiness situation really attended to, because I've been running with harsh treatment for so long. I think going for Yuno for the citizen happiness, because it is boosted by the Sanctuary in the Roma, is a solid option. Could also go for Westa for better stab change, but I think just getting the citizens happier is probably the way to go. Let's go for that. We have plenty of money saved up. We have plenty of, of uh, tax and commerce going on as well without any changes yet, so we're looking solid on the economy front. Let's go for Yuno for the citizen happiness. All right, good. Okay, now let's uh, plug our nose and take a look and see what we're dealing with here. Oh my god. Lucis, you dog. All right, so he has uh, screwed everything up here. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point for Magna Gratia is I'm going to switch over from doing harsh treatment and go to local autonomy. 
This will reduce the output quite a bit, but this is going to be less damaging to the province, and local autonomy is going to give me a better sense of when I can switch off of, um, switch over to something like Borderlands or, uh, you know, going for acquisition of wealth. I could also try to increase loyalty through cultural interactions, like uh, civil rights and whatnot, but ultimately this is mostly just coming from my tyranny. Also, he has corruption, which I guess I should have thought about. Yeah. That's not great. Although he's losing the corruption fairly quickly here, but also impose sanctions to make him lose it faster. I did get that tech earlier, so I I gain uh, tyranny. Or wait, did I get a tech that affects imposed corruption? Maybe I didn't get that yet. Hold on. It's in the civic area. No, the oratory area, isn't it? Oh yeah, no loyalty malice. That's what that does. So we can impose sanctions for no loyalty cost, which will be fine. Uh, the Bonnie don't like this, but this is worth it. So. Impose sanctions on the Rosas. It's going to lose all that corruption. Getting the tyranny for that's completely worth it, because now Megadegratia should not be as upset because of his corruption, so that's going to be good. Um, yeah. Okay, so what I want to do, though, is spend a lot of my PI to address this. Especially the places that are near disloyalty, so or in disloyalty. So, also, what's your current loyalty? You've become disloyal as well, even though that shouldn't have lowered your loyalty, so got to address that first. I could bribe him. I guess I probably should do it like this. Unfortunately, um, if I'd known that he'd go down to 32, I would have bribed him before doing the sanctions, but it's just one corruption, or I mean, it's just five corruption. It's gonna go down relatively quick. So let's go ahead and give him a bribe. Don't like this, but uh, this is better than free hands. Yeah, because my anti-corruption measures don't outpace the free hands. So that's definitely an issue. Lowering his power base could also um, help a bit, although that's not really a main part of his corruption here, not really. Actually, it is a main part of his of it, or of his uh, loyalty. Rewarding veterans may be necessary here. All right, and this may not adjust right away. But let me also give him a bribe, to make him loyal. There we go. Now, these places in Magna Gratia should have okay. Governor Corruption is back up to minus 0.01, but his uh, loyalty is, is reacquired, so that's fine. <sighs> um, let me think about this. All right, Apulia. Let me just target places that are near disloyal or completely disloyal. So Apulia, put you onto local autonomy. This will not adjust quite yet, but it should be better once it adjusts. Actually, I guess it did adjust. Okay, this is not enough. This will have to do, though, for now. Um, and then, let's see where else. Sicania, go on to local autonomy as well. And that should be it. The rest of these should go immediately on to cultural assimilation. You have to get these people assimilated as fast as possible to get this whole loyalty collapse situation under control. You've got to be a bit more precise than just having everyone be on harsh treatment. And that's actually all of my PI right there um, over here. Where is the worst? Ah, uh, man, um... I don't really have any PI left now. Okay. What is the... It's 83% Hellenic. I don't think... I don't think doing this here is that necessary. Go on to cultural simulation instead. We'll, we'll keep attending to this later, but that's that for now. And then as for my other governors... Is anyone super corrupt? You, I need to do some sanctions with. Or not? Can't do sanctions? It doesn't have enough corruption. Okay, never mind. Loyalty is fine, though. Stats are okay. I think this is all okay for now. Okay. Government looks fine. Right, now with my money, um, let's go ahead and get to work on getting our war with Arcadia set up here. So, who's ready to go? The Italia Levy, which is up to 82 cohorts now, so that's pretty crazy, is uh, not ready for about a year and a half. The Mega Negration Levy, though, is ready to go. And I'm glad I made this guy loyal, because we're gonna have to make use of him right away. You guys can actually get, just get picked up, or get raised, actually, at Levy by him. No, don't be disloyal now. 47, all right, keep it together. This force should be more than enough for these needs. Embark the army, go ahead and pay for maintenance, and also pay... Eh, 
I don't want to lose any ships, so let's pay for fleet maintenance as well. Fort maintenance probably needs to be turned on as well. Let's go finally clean this up. Off we go. We'll just land immediately over here and attack um, these places directly. Uh, I guess I should probably... Who should I target here? Um, actually, what I could do as well is split my forces and then land... Yeah, let's actually land at Gideon and get split apart and have some of them go north to, to come into the land uh, from this direction. That's the way to do it. Okay. And the Italian levy will just recover in the meantime. Now, with my remaining money, I should reinvest. Um, I've already attended to mainland Italia. I have more work to do over here with investment, so... I need to get some more of these buildings set up here, although I don't really have a lot of slaves left over over here. Although, actually, first things first. Let me get the opium thing addressed. Um, we are producing uh, another opium here, but not over here yet. Yeah, we don't have enough slaves here. What do we need? 17 slaves. Can we get um, 17 slaves into this place? Possibly. It will be worth it to get the extra copy of opium. Also, I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, so move pops. We don't have vegetables, though, so let me attend to that. Vegetables. Um, cancel the hemp for just a sec here. I probably don't need to keep hemp going at this point most of the time. We'll just trade for vegetables permanently instead of hemp. It's worth more for food anyways. Yeah, so, okay, so now that we've got the vegetables going, let's bring in some slaves over here. Just a lot of promotion. Also, just a lot of promotion over here as well. We need 17. We do have uh, all the slaves over here for the opium there. Okay, so move slaves in from, let's see, Lamia, we can move some in for now, that's fine. Delphi is fine. Then Amphisa is fine for now. There we go, another copy of opium. Now what we do is we cancel something that we're just trading one copy of, like glass. Where's my glass import? Here it is. Cancel the glass import. And then trade in my internal opium. So now that we've got double opium, national Freeman happiness plus 4%, that's going to be quite handy. Okay. Hopefully this all stays. We should also, because we have stone permanently, don't we? No, never mind, we don't. Let's uh, trade in some stone and get to work on doing some infrastructure building. Uh, what am I going to do? Let's cancel the livestock for a sec. Trade in the stone. All right, let's start building some infrastructure where possible. This place is loyal right now, so we can build stuff here. Same thing here. Um, fort here, that's right. Um, okay, so over here, what I probably want to build is, because this is going to be a tax area in Beatia, let's build a slave estate for more slave output there. Um, Lamia probably shouldn't be a city, honestly, because it's just a plains coastal area. This would be very, uh, better as an iron mine, so let me go ahead and revoke Lamia. Then that's it for tyranny for now. We're out of tyranny room. Um, let's see here. I probably don't have a lot of slaves to work with over here because of that concentration. How about up in Epirus? How many slaves do we have sitting around? Oh, quite a few, actually. All right, let's get to work. So Epirus will be a manpower province, but should any of these be mines? We should have a gold mine here at Dodona, one of the first gold mines we actually have. There's gold in um, Athenae as well, should be noted. Um, where is it? Where does it say? Yeah, here it is. Yeah, so gold in Athenae, but of course Athenae will be a research city, no doubt about that. But this can be our first gold mine, and we do have actually... Actually, we, did, we set this up earlier, so never mind. We're already good to go on this one. But aside from that, we should build enclosures for the manpower benefit, and we should build a lumber camp for the uh, manpower benefit as well. All right, what else? Um, the rest of these should just be barracks. So build some barracks. This farming settlement should become a barracks. This honey location in the mountains should be a barracks as well. This is a passerum, actually, technically. Horses can be barracks. The city of Ambrakia can stay a city because this is the best spot for the capital. Should Korkaira be a city still is also a question worth considering. 
Uh, this would be fine to just be a, uh, a settlement, but I can't actually demote this because I don't have any more tyranny room. So we'll come back for Quakayata later, as planes on coast isn't probably good enough under most circumstances. Unless there's some really good reason to make it a city. So we'll come back to this later. For now, we'll just leave it as it is. And then over here in Ambarakia, we could build some city infrastructure. We can't get or, I mean, we could get rid of the Great Temple. We can't rebuild this, so I want to keep it for the loyalty bonus. And then aside from that, what else can we get here? Um, this is going to be a manpower focus. We probably want Freeman desired ratio in Ambarakia. Although, what's the culture like? We have a couple Romans here, and then some Epirotes as well. Could also build a Grand Theater, which is probably good to have really anywhere in any city. Um, let me think about this. Ambarakia should get some... What do we have here? No, not that pop info. We need more Freeman desired ratio here on Ambarakia. Let me go ahead and build maybe some districts for Freeman and some slave traders. Let's get the ratio set up here on Ambarakia. And then down here, Aetolia, as noted before, will be tax oriented. So this will be a city eventually once I have the PI for it and we'll build city infrastructure there. We can build some marble mines out here, which we should do. Let's get the slaves moved in as well. With a mine, we're gonna need 12, so let's move in enough for two copies of marble. Uh, bring them in from, we can bring some over from, where is this? Yeah, from uh, from Therium, as long as we're careful about not bringing in too many. Therium will still need, how many for the extra copy? 15. So we can bring in a couple from Therium, but not too many. And one, you need to bring in, actually you already have enough once we've got the mine built, so that's gonna be fine. And then aside from that, um, we could build some tax buildings around here as well, or like slave estates. Yeah, let's do some basic slave estate buildings here for olives, for earthenware, this vegetable place up here in the mountains. Um, actually, hold on. For vegetables, let's build a farming settlement. There we go. This grain tile, this fort, doesn't need to be here anymore. Um, I could keep this fort here, but again, my need for internal forts that aren't on capitals or cities is kind of getting limited, so let's go ahead and replace this with a farming settlement. And this place here can just be a slave estate as well. Then over on these islands, what's this? Earthenware, that's a slave estate. And then you can be a slave estate as well. Let's also move some slaves over to the production locations or the commerce production locations. So into Orakelia Eitolorum, let's move in some slaves. Gonna need a total of 12, so let's see if we can pull enough in. All right, from Ambrakia, we can definitely bring some in. That's gonna be fine. Um, da -da -da. Therium can bring over a couple more, so. Two. All right, does Therium still have enough? Yeah, let's stop taking them from Therium. I don't want Therium to run out of uh, opium producers. All right, so then that will be 12 of 12 once this is built. Hepate, we need some slaves here as well. I don't know if we're gonna have enough still left to bring in, but let's see. Possibly not, really. Um, own a dace, send them in. All right, that's seven. We're gonna need 12, so we need five more. Uh, not seeing a lot of good options here. More from the, where is this from? Olives. Okay. Where is this coming from? Okay. Oh, from right there. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Um. Bring him in. Need two more. I think we can technically bring in two from Therium with it still being a surplus producer. Yeah, 15 of 15. That's close, but we've just about squeezed all the slaves into their spots in Aetolia, so that's pretty good. And then um, over here in Beatia, this will also be tax oriented, so let's see if we can. Uh, let's first see what the slave situation is. We have a lot of slaves around here to work with. Not really, but we can set up a couple places here now. 
All right, Amphiza with stone will be a stone mine. Let's go ahead and get the slaves. Also, let's make sure that the slaves over here are promoting. Nope, not that one. No slave promotion allowed in these spots. Okay, good. And over here. Now over here, slave promotion not allowed in Amphiza. Okay, uh, we're going to need 12 slaves here, so let's bring in some slaves from Napactus. This place here needs all 17, so we'll leave that as it is. Opos? We want to move slaves to Opos later, so for now, Antidem. And then Thebe. That's going to be 12 of 12. Now, Lamia as an iron mine in the future. Well, I guess we can get this going now, honestly. Build the iron mine. And then, let's see what else. Build an iron mine. Oh, this is a city still, actually, but I can't replace it yet because of tyranny, so we'll wait for now. And we'll uh, end that later. Stone mine here. Enclosure. So, lumber mill, or lumber camp, rather. Mine for base metals looks good. And then, yeah. Alright, can we squeeze any more slaves in here? Let me also disallow promotion in these new tiles. Okay. I'm gonna run out of slaves in this area to work with, though. I need to bring them in from other places. Let me uh, transfer some slaves in from Eleusis. Good. Now, let's see here. Um, let me start by filling places that already have a lot of slaves. So, send slaves to Elatea first from Phoebe. I need, I think, just 12, right? Yeah. 12 for these guys. Who's next? Lamia? No. I guess uh, Nikea Locrum would be next. Yeah. Alright, so into this mine. We need to put, let's see here. So six, it'd be, we need to put eight into this mine to get to 12. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's see, Amphibe, whatever slaves are left. Amphiza, we don't want to touch. Actually, do we want to touch? No, we don't want to touch. Thespia, we definitely can touch. Non-producer tiles, they can still have low slave numbers. As long as they have the villa, they're gonna have better attacks output, at least still. Gotta have more resources to sell, that's the way. If anything, the Selly kids returning to the Mediterranean means another big trade partner we can work with, so that's uh, not so bad. All right, Delphi needs some slaves as well. All right, is there anyone left in the area we can even use? We're kind of running out at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> not really. <laughs> hmm. Well, let's, we can at least build the infrastructure and come back for this later, once we have more slaves to work with. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. All right. And then we may as well build the other buildings here. So we want to have a slave estate here, and over here, also a slave estate, and then a slave estate. And then these cities we'll work on later. Okay, um, and then, let's see here. That's probably enough infrastructure in Greece for now. I don't want to go too crazy here. A lot of these areas need to just focus on recovering before I can really take full advantage of them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm allergic to good micro. <laughs> okay, um, back over here. Speaking of things that are called Greece, Magna Gratia. Um, we can't do anything here, so that's not great. Uh, we can do stuff down here, but we've already done stuff down here. We've already built all the barrack and whatnot infrastructure. I think we've already done everything that we could do at the time. Actually, no. Brutium. Let me flip back over in my notes to what I plan to do here. I think this was a manpower province, wasn't it? Yep, manpower province, so oops, we can do stuff in Brutium. Uh, never mind, we actually can't, so I spoke too soon. How about down here in uh, Sicily? Not, no, we, well, uh, hold on, can we? Yeah, we can, this is actually technically still loyal by a little bit. Okay, well, while it's loyal, we should do some building here. Uh, I think we've already done everything we could while it was loyal. Um, these are all tax areas, so... Had the Thranum should be a farming settlement. And this place here should be a slave estate. This should actually be an enclosure, not a farming settlement. So let me replace that. 
This should this should be a farming settlement. Farming settlement here. Uh, slave estate for the pearls. Wait, hold on, wait. Oh yeah, no, just slave estate for the pearls. Um, slave estate for the wine. And what do we have here? A mine for the stone. Let's do some slave micro as well over here. So, basically, all these places should not allow slave promotion, um, except for uh, Lily Biom. Let's see here. So, slave promotion disallow and all these uh, tiles here. At least the ones that will... Actually, the slave estates, it's not a big deal, because they'll have desired ratio, but I need to keep specific numbers for the places that have resources coming out. So, slave estates we can leave alone. The farming settlement, though... Also, because the output bonus from the slave estates will be better with happier slaves, and they're less happy when promotion is not allowed. Then what do we have over here? We have a mine, so no promotion for you. What do we have here? Farm for no promotion. Okay. All right, and then Lily Biome allows promotion, which it should, so that we can get Freeman. Okay, there we go. We can also import something. I'm going to uh, adjust all my imports in a minute here, but let me do this first. All right, time to do some slave micro, what we can at least. So, uh, we want. So we already have enough over here for. We actually have more than we need here, so we can move some people out of this forest, um, or really this mine in the forest. We have enough up here as well, more than enough. We can move one out. Um, this farm needs more slaves, though. What are we at? Six of twelve. We need six more. So let's move some over from Salinus. What are we at now? Move one more over from Salinus. And then we can move one over from Attix as well. There we go. We can move one more from Attix after this, too. Good. And then this place here I already set to no promotion. Now we can move some slaves as well into the farm being built in Hadranum. We need six over here too. Move one from Attix, and then we don't touch Attix after this. We can move them from Lilibium as well, or from places like Panodamus, where the, um, where's Panodamus? What's up here? Where the uh, slave estate doesn't need large numbers, it just needs to have happiness. So bring them in. Need just one more now, right? Yeah. From maybe Eraclea Manoa. Oh yes, definitely from Eraclea Manoa. All right, uh, Hepana with its seven that it needs. Eraclea Manoa will provide. Yes, definitely. Actually, that's more than I need, so that was a mistake, but that's fine. We can then shift one over from Hepana to Therme Himarensis for the fish. There we go, just so we're mid-maxing. And then we can move people over from the wine. Oh my gosh, there's there's 11 slaves up here in this wine tile up at uh, Cephalodonium. That is not needed, so we can bring them over to the farms where they're going to produce us some more fish after we get this thing built. And that should be this entire area attended to now, so that's pretty good. Right, with our remaining money. Let's uh, actually, I think, shift back over. And I do want to build some infrastructure over here in Sardin uh, Sardinia. This place here is ready to go off of harsh treatment, and this place here is also, I think, ready. So we're going to switch these once I have PI, and this one as well, once it's uh, converted. Actually, we want to switch these over to being uh, conversion first before I get on to the uh, tax stuff, but we'll get to that eventually. For now, we do have some infrastructure built up over here. Um, I think all the best locations are already mined. Let's see here. Some of them, at least. I built a lot of mines before, so I remember that part, but some of them have lost some of their slaves. I've done a lot of promotion, so I don't know how this happened, but we have to fix this. So let's start up here in... Uh, actually, let's start down here first. Um, so where we have mines currently. This one's already full up. We actually can lose some of these slaves and redistribute them. The iron mines... This one here is too small. We need to add some more slaves over. We'll move them over from, first of all, Metella, where there's too many slaves. So we'll just uh, fill it up a little bit. There we go. We can still draw a few more from Attila as well. Um, and then this base metal mine needs one more slave. We'll bring him over. We'll bring two over from Attila to be on the safe side. And then up here, uh, we need to build some other infrastructure. Let's go ahead and build a logging camp, build a farm, and then build some enclosures. Build an enclosure here as well, and then build some slave estates down here and a slave estate here as well, and then also build some farming settlements over here for the fish. That's actually all of our money right there, so never mind. So let's actually cancel this farming settlement to make some more money back and then do some slave micro to fill these places up as well. So <clears throat> I 
let's do that. So into the fish area, we're going to need to have 12 slaves. So let's go ahead and actually, first of all, let's go through and disallow promotion in all of these tiles, whether they currently have uh, the infrastructure or not, they will have the infrastructure in time. So no promotion allowed. We're all staying put, serving the state with your unpaid labor, because I'm just a nice guy like that. All right. Into this fish tile, we need to send four slaves. So let's see. Uh, we can redistribute them from Sulchi just fine. And then uh, Sulchi can also lose. All right, hold on, wait. This should not be a slave estate. This should be a farming settlement. So glad I caught that. But same idea. We will need uh, those four slaves. So that's good. Okay, and then um, into uh, Othoka, we need to send. Actually, this already has enough, so never mind. Into Dare, this already also has enough, so that's pretty good. Um, Hidata Hipsitana needs to have five sent over. We'll send them again from Sulchi, where they're not needed as much. Two, three, four, five. Okay, good. Into Lacan, we need to send five as well. Send them over from Sulchi first and foremost. All right. And then both these mines are tended to. And these fish tiles need some slaves as well, even though I don't have the infrastructure built yet. So let's move over, first of all, from Sulchi. Actually, hold on. Where's my Sulchi target? Are there no more slaves here? Why can't I see it on my list? Oh, it's right here. Okay. Move over like this. And then the rest from Corrales is fine. There's 12, and then we need to have eight, uh, eight sent over. We can send eight from Corrales. Four, and then the rest from where? Is there any other place in this province that I'm not going to keep slaves at? Actually, no. Wow, okay. This is like a pure tax province right here. Um, I need four more. I guess I can drain some over from... Athako can lose three, and then Tere can lose one. There we go. We're, gonna, we're on the knife's edge here. So Athako, let's see, where are you? Two, three, and then Tere, one. There we go. 12, 12, 12. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Whew. All right. Um, hmm. You know what? I'm going to actually change my strategy a little bit here. I'm going to cancel these buildings to give myself more room. I want to focus on cities last. I want to get the basic settlement infrastructure going first. So get these uh, buildings constructed as well. And then I'm going to save the rest of my money for now so I have a little bit of money in the bank to pay for this war, if nothing else. And then, <laughs> finally, almost an hour in already, I go back over, cancel the stone, that's enough uh, building for now, and switch back over to livestock. And that is that. All right, very good. Up to speed three, we resume. Great. But you don't have a governorship or any army, so I don't care so much. There's the Tolnik fleet sailing around. Also, the, the Cretans are standing in my mountains for some reason, so very interesting behavior. Don't know what to make of that. But yeah, off we go. PI is declining, not like that so much. What's the issue here? Oh, Cornelia Secunda has become pretty disloyal. I'll give her free hands, fine. What? That made a civil war trigger? Like, what is. What's the issue? What, why are you mad? What, what do you have to do with this? <sighs> this guy's so bad. I gotta give him an office so I can give him free hands or something. Or bribe him once I have a bit more PI. Or I interact with Scipio instead, who is actually... Hold on. Yeah, this guy's actually better. Let me give Scipio an office. 10 charisma. Fine, I'll put you to use doing something. You can replace Fabio Secunda. There you go. 32, really? God, fine. 
Alright, there we go. That should fix on the monthly tick. Alright, the Mega Negrations will split, led by the... Brain damage? Ugh, that's not good. That brings him... Oh yeah, this is a problem. That's a really bad injury to have all of a sudden, because now he's lost three in both Marshall and Finesse. He is no longer a good governor for Magna Gratia. God damn it. Ugh, whatever. For this war, um, his lower Marshall is not going to be a huge problem. Probably. Okay, here's what we do. Um, split in half. Half of you head up north to just attack Stimphalos. The other half of you can actually go into Adagos right away. We don't need to do any complicated... Actually, I don't even think I need my navy for this war. Uh, now that I think about it, the navy can just go back home, because we can just do this whole war by land, because we can reach everyone, because we we control Epidouaros on our own. So, we'll actually, we'll keep the navy here in case we want them for something, but I don't think I need them for this war really at all. I will use them in the follow-up war against the Nesoitic League, but for now, the navy can just kind of stay nearby, and they preserve... I'll put them in Corinthos for now, but that should be fine. Importantly, I am is done. Very good. On the monthly tick, this should go away because we've been attended to our disloyalty. All right, at the march, here we come. All right, here we go. Clear war. Take Arcadia. Crete comes in. Thanks for the, the helping out, Crete. I guess they could walk over and join us. No need to get too complicated here. Ships are in port. We begin. Is that so, really? By yourself? <sighs> Alright. Let me find you the stinkiest fish pro fish tile to give you a, a holy in Calipolis. There you go. Hope you enjoy the smell. Little bastard. Alright. Here we come. This should be no trouble at all. Just on partial morale. Should not be a problem. We'll just uh, overwhelm these guys. Now there's a... I'm gonna siege both these tiles manual or siege them the long way, and then I'll assault at these two city-states, because uh, it's gonna... there's too much assaulting for just this number of forces here, so this should be fine. Maybe he's gonna hide in the port because of my navy being too big. Also lower. F uh, no, fort maintenance for this fort here is handy. Oh, you know what? Uh, this could be a problem. This could be a problem. Um, we're just going to each other's lands. Um, okay. Let me split. Let me leave behind. Uh, yeah, you stay there to hold the fort down. These guys can't reach me. You swing around to protect Gideon, if you can. Minor addendum. Manius Claudius has suggested a small addendum to an often referenced law pertaining to the rights of the common folk. It should only be a small effort to persist through the Senate. It, oh, man. I want to save my PI, but six stability is six stability. I can't turn that down. Actually... Stay there. Leave behind one more force so that disease doesn't cause this uh, thing to fall apart. Now the rest of you head over here. There we go. That's a bit safer of a siege to maintain. Head down to protect Gideon if you can. And we proceed. 73,000, by the way. Barbs are rising up. All right. There's already barbs uh, doing stuff over here. We'll see what a religion these barbs are before I decide uh, if I want to care about this. They're Hellenic. Go for it, honestly. Add more Hellenic population. Watch me care deeply. By which I mean I will not care deeply. Alright, just chase him around. And just definitely just reconnect it there. We have plenty of siege advantages with our engineers and whatnot, so we should just uh, make short work of these sieges, even without doing assaults. We could probably do assaults over here for these level 1 forts, but no need to go too crazy here. Alright, we land here. Battle of Right, it's done already, so that's fine. Now we can rejoin and uh, get reorganized here. Okay. If Crete comes joins comes and joins me, I will happily do an assault with Crete helping out. That will uh, save me some time. Looks like that's what they're going to do. 
Okay, um, I'll go ahead and do an assault here. Also, the garrison's at Torchwold Strengths. This should be fairly safe. Alright, Siege of Argos is one. Of course, we're not doing any sacking, because this is not my character we're playing as. Valeria Prima, to be exact, one of the two. You head on down and just uh, snipe this army here. I guess I could join in and do an assault up here, but I don't want to go too crazy with assaults. My barbs are taking my land. Sure, go for it. This should be a perfectly fine little stack wipe. It was, in fact, a perfectly fine little stack wipe, so we proceed. If we get a breach or something, I'll do an assault, but otherwise, I will just. Stenfali wants to sue for peace. Can they can they sue this quickly? This is too soon for a sue for peace. This isn't with I thought you had to wait six months at least or something. Hmm. Well, I'm not gonna whatever their peace deal is, I'm not gonna go for it. It's not gonna involve them handing over all their land to me, which is what I really want. Alright, you know what? Do an assault up here too. I don't want to wait this long. Let's just get this thing wrapped up. Also, Crete, as usual, strategically being very helpful by walking north in the direction of none of my enemies. So, thanks for that one, Crete. Really appreciate it. Around we come. Maybe Crete's going to go fight the Barbs, which is uh, cute that that's their priority right now. The Barbs are going to destroy themselves, taking territory, so... <laughs> Goofy Crete behavior. Alright. All my barracks are done. Also, we killed their guys. Okay, at this point, these guys can definitely do an assault. They've recovered enough morale, so let's just do that. Wait a bit for the morale of these guys to recover, and then we grab that as well. A crease going to come in for a naval battle. Okay, very interesting. See, just one here, come over here. Let's see who wins this one. Crete's going to narrowly win. Good one, Crete. Really appreciate it. All right, once my olives, you guys move back together. All right, Crete won the battle. Very nice. Barb will pillage my land. It's going to have iron. All right, wait a bit for the recovery of the morale, and then we'll do an assault, just so that we don't have any problems here. Although, there are a partial garrison. All right, um, wait for tick. All right, no breach. That's fine, though. Order the assault. This should be completely fine. And win us the war nice and easily. And with that, the mission tree. Siege of Troison is one. All right. Hickety. Annexation. Oh, wait, no. I said annexation in the thing, so that doesn't work. Higgity Haitian. Prepare for annexation. There we go. I mean, the greatest insult I can give them is by saying stupid wordplay puns as I conquer them. <laughs> they won't appreciate that. All right, 2 AE is completely fine. Um, Symphalian Arcadia to Rome. Epidwaran Arcadia to Rome. And Troizenian Arcadia to Rome. Sounds good to me. All right. Now, these can all be banished for reduced AE, not that it was much AE to begin with. And, more importantly, a mission task can be complete Polyne or rather, <laughs> Polynesian campaign. <laughs> That's not happening at the stage of the campaign, I'll say that. Peloponnesian campaign, <laughs> could you imagine? Polynesian campaign, I'm just off <laughs> in the Pacific. Oh boy, alright, Peloponnesian campaign, there we go. Um, even famous Alexander was not able to claim victory over the Spartans in the south, nor complete control of the Peloponnese. Rome will do what Alexander could not. Okay, colony in the Peloponnese. Finally, we have been able to take control of the Peloponnese, home of the great cities such as Sparta, Corinthus, and Argos. Once the heart of the civilized world, the arrogant Greeks have fallen upon harsh times, now reduced to subjects of our great nation. A Roman colony in the Peloponnese will remind them of that. Okay, so... It's not picking my preferred spot of Gideon, but there are some good alternatives. We could put the thing in Sparta, which would be okay. Let's remember that um, of these three provinces, Laconia, let me flip back to it in my notes here. Laconia is going to be manpower. Actually, all three of these are, are manpower, so all three of these are going to be manpower focused. So, um, of these options, what do I want to do? Well, what I could do is Argos, because this is a, a good port city. I think I mentioned last episode that I might have Argos stay as the capital, or be the capital of Arcadia. But the downside with that is that um, uh, it's an okay idea. Arcadia, the only good terrain in Arcadia is this completely inland megalopolis farmland area. But Argos is fine as an alternative. It does have um, iron. You could make it an iron mine alternatively. 
Megalopolis is a better tile to be a city because it has earthenware as opposed to something like iron. And But this will all be manpower focused anyways, so... Hmm. Questions, questions, questions. I think, all things considered, having Atagos be the capital would be okay. Any special modifiers for Atagos? Not really. It is one of the greatest harbors, allegedly. Um, I mean, this modifier would make it pretty good, giving it all those uh, population and the Colonia modifier. Hmm. I do want to move the capital of, of um, Achaia up to be at Ellis. So having Atagos be my capital over here would be solid. Could also make it Messena. But I like Gideon better as opposed to Messena for the capital over here. It'd be a capital, capital, and then capital. So it would have it, and then capital over here. So this would look nice at least on the map. That matters for something. Okay, this is the rare plains coastal tile that I'm gonna keep as a city. The city of Atagos, one of the greatest harbors in the Peloponnese. There we go. And we can now go ahead and do one of these. Um, although first, let me look at my new territory. Um, again, this will be manpower focused eventually. So this fort here can go. Uh, what else? This port can go. I can be gotten rid of. Atagos remains a city, and for manpower purposes, it will no longer need. We'll keep the farmer's market actually for now. Can I not build a new farmer's market? I guess I can wait once, that makes sense. Slave trader for manpower city can go. Noble district can go. Citizen district can stay, because manpower cities want citizen ratio as well. Granary, I suppose, could go. Do I need this granary here that badly? Probably not, I'll just screw the granary. Form can stay. What else do they have? A port can stay. Fort can stay. And then one, two, what's left? Three. Oh yeah, there we go. That's fine. Okay, over here, Epidwaris definitely does not need to be a city. A hill city, no way. It's got a shipyard. Okay, we can destroy all the infrastructure for some extra money. And then we'll demote this later once we have room in our tyranny pool for that, which we don't at the minute. No, we don't at the minute, even with my discounted costs here. Um, Hermion does not need to be a fort, and neither does Troizen. And that is that for this province. We'll attend to it later. Okay, now let's go back over to our mission tree. So we could either do Greek clients. We can release some of the major cities of Greece as client states, which is an interesting idea. But I don't really want to do that. So we could do integrate instead. Ooh, okay. 20 years of one conversion speed, one assimilation speed in all of Greece. Because that says every province in Greece. We also get claims in the Cyclades, although we already have claims in the Cyclades, I believe. This is pretty crazy. That's going to really help with assimilation in the Greek areas, which means getting these places happy and switched over to the assimilation policy will be even more important. It is time to properly integrate the people of Greece into Rome as an eastern province directly controlled by the Senate. I couldn't agree more. There we go. That is a crazy modifier for 20 years, and we can finish the missions of doing Greece. Whew, very good. Before I click that, though, I will probably just use this army to attack the Nesuitic League with my navy here once it uh, recovers a bit of morale. But first, let's get this mission over and done with. Finally, Greece is just about completely ours. It's essentially completely ours now with one little bit left to deal with. But the Subduing Greece mission is complete. The Gordian Knot is cut. Okay, we have got ourselves a number of options here. Um, so, Punic Rivals is again an option to conquer and subjugate Carthage, so we know what this is. Uh, Trouble in Hellas Pontus. The region known as Hellas Pontus is the furthest Hellenic settlers have civilized in the areas north of Anatolia and Thrace. The coasts of Bosphorus and the northern Pontus are dotted with our religious brethren, struggling to carve out a life surrounded by barbarians in Scythia and Dacia. It is high time that we not only incorporate these colorful bastions of civilization, including the Thracian land, the Samachian rule has left to stabilize, but also pacify the wilds that surround them. Unfortunately for the poor and battered inhabitants of these regions, our interests have brought our own armies here, but we can promise that once we push out any interlopers, peace can come forever. Conquer the Thracian territories, Scythia, Bosphorus, as well as the Dacian. What? <laughs> what is this mission tree? Already we can go into the Bosphorus? And like north of it? <laughs> this is... This is beyond the scope at the minute. We're not doing this right now. All right, we've also got and the Adriatic Pirates. 
uh, conquer subjugate the Illyrian and Pannonian tribes. This is a bit more what I was thinking. Something to kind of consolidate my holdings. I don't want to keep going east or north right now. I want to go back westward and get my territories linked up together. And if this is for conquering the Illyrian and Pannonian regions, which this sort of seems to imply, I'm on board for that one for sure, and Moesia Superior as well. This looks pretty promising. Or Stabilize and Grow Magna Gratia. Um, I think this is essentially um, the generic Pearl of mission, except for your non-region capital based on the way it's worded. So this could be good. Or, hold on, create a core loyal subject to Neapolis, increase the food supply. I don't really like these pearl missions, as I've said before, so I'm going to probably avoid this, even though this is something I want to do, like, subjectively, but not through this mission tree. I think and the, Adri and the Adriatic Pirates is the way to go for now. This feels the most feasible to do, and it connects my territory back together, which I think is important. Even a slim connection on the coast is going to be really helpful for keeping my empire cohesive as I do grow it. At this point, we have so much territory over in the Greece area. We need to start getting our, our two sort of sections put, uh, brought back together. So as our influence expands, commensurate to our interests abroad, we have been hampered by our efforts in our efforts by an annoyance that seemingly grows worse by the day. Barbarous pirates raid our coastal towns and plundering the trade routes, which has been happening for what it's worth. We fear that our continued silence in the face of these provocations is understood as a tacit acceptance while the Roman Senate and people allow such lawlessness in our own backyard. We have to conquer or subjugate the Illyrian and Pannonian tribes. Here we go. All right. What is this going to require? 50 PI to start the mission tree. That's not what I like to see. Approach Illyrian colonies. I don't think I'm going to bother trying to befriend the Illyrians. I'm just going to kill them all, as the Romans would do. All right, so discuss anti-pirate laws. Okay. This may force me to, to actually switch to that anti-pirate law in my law section. Where is this? The Lex Claudii. I guess we'll see if that's what happens, but uh, I would prefer to stay on the manpower recovery speed if I could. I guess we'll see. But after this one, so we need to just save PI for this, unfortunately. Um, this, uh, these debates probably give me claims, I'm assuming. Uh, this was this one here. Own um, all of these provinces, okay. Crown to Colonia, goods claim. Okay, this gives me claim. Hold on, let me look at the provinces here. So, um, I'm assuming that these discussions that happen in the Senate give me claims along the coastline to do these missions. So, owning this stuff gives me claims on Pannonia Prima, which is where? Pannonia Prima is up here. Occidentalis, which is... Uh, Occidentalis, which is... Where is Occidentalis? Is it Pannonia Prima Occidentalis? Wait, how many, how many Pannonia Primas are there? There's Pannonia Prima, Pannonia Prima Occidentalis, Pannonia Prima Orientalis. So, was this West and East Pannonia Prima? I only see one Pannonia Prima. It's not labeled. Okay, I don't know what's going on with that, but well, whatever. Uh, Nordicum, uh, which is okay. Where is Nordicum? Nordicum. I, I can't tell where these provinces are. The, the point is, we get a bunch of... Uh, also, um, Car Carnuntia, which we do know where that is. It's up here. Okay, so we just get a bunch of provinces... Oh, here's Norlacum over here. So we get a bunch of uh, claims on stuff up here. Um, this one here gives me a bunch of money, oddly enough, and gives me claims on... It's just going to be claim... Okay, I'm not going to try to figure out where these claims are. The point is, we get claims on random stuff in this area, so that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to assume, I'm going to hope that this mission for the 50 PI entry level cost, or like entry cost, gives me claims on stuff going in this direction. Fortunately, much of this region is already owned by just two large tribes, so this will be really easy to logistically approach taking. So we'll see what we get from this once we have the PI for it. But we're not necessarily in a giant rush to do this right this second. I want to finish taking the Greek stuff and then kind of have some time to recover, uh, get my nation restabilized before we move on to more conquests. These guys here, by the way, will not be Hellenic largely. They're going to be Illyric and then Druidic further north. Maybe some of them are even uh, Zalmoxian. So we're going to have to worry a lot about assimilating these people up here, which will take a lot of time. So we're not in any huge rush to take this territory right this second. As for now, let's go ahead and pick up the soldiers. Uh, once we get them back onto full thing there. How many ships do you guys have? 13 ships. You know what? For that number, I will actually increase plate units. And I shouldn't need any 
fort maintenance though at all, so let's turn that back off. You come back around and then reorganize up here in Corinthus and then board the ships and we'll sail off to take on the Nesolitics uh, once we get there. So that looks good. What's going on over here? No change here yet. There's a big war going on in Anatolia though. Megara population is dying, I'm aware. There's too many pops here. Oh, these slaves here can get moved actually. Probably should use these slaves for stuff over here. Let me move the slaves out of Megara, that would solve my problem. We have vegetables, right? We do. Let's move them out of Megara. Megara does not need any of these slaves, to be honest. And then move them north up into this area. Move them into Thebae first and foremost. Right, move them from Eleusis. Alright, and now we can uh, fill these places with more slaves as I wanted to earlier. Move. Hold on, promotion. Why do you lose a population? Move a slave. Maybe I ran out of, of slaves to work with. Move one from the bay. And over here, we need to move the full 12. You already have enough. You are going to need a full 12. Yeah, okay. Lamia, let's move them from the bay. Alright, and then Elatea already has enough. Delphi, move them from Thebae as well. And then we can move one from Tanagra as well. We still need, where are we going to need? 12 in total, so we need 8 more. <sighs> Any more <laughs> now? Uh, one from Thespia. That's basically it though. Alright. Any more slaves over here we can part with. I guess um, I do want um, tax up here, so maybe not. We can move slaves out of Attica, though. Move some more to Eleusis. Aegina can lose some slaves for sure. Wait. Aegina is... Yeah, down here. Aegina can lose some slaves. Um, Opros, or Oropos, rather, can also lose some slaves. That's fine. And then move some from Ramus, Ramnus rather, Arian, and some, some Salamis, just a few more. Alright, now all these slaves in Eleusis are going to be redeployed up to my two tax provinces up here. Move them once again into Thebe from Eleusis, so just uh, all these Athenians are going to be redistributed up here. Okay, now let's uh, continue with the work here. Move another five in from Thebe, which has now grown quite a bit. That's only temporary. Four, five. Okay. And then uh, Thespe with the slave estate doesn't need to have any specific amount. Um, but this place here with the mine does need to have a specific amount. So let's move in ten. Yep, move in ten from Thebe. Good. These slave estates don't matter as much. Okay, let's move the Thebe slaves up into uh, Chalcis to redistribute them in Uboa. Move them first into the neighboring to Chalcis, um, Anthidum from Thebe. Then into Chalcis from Anthidum. And there are going to be some slaves up here already, but this is uh, still going to be useful. Alright, now up here, uh, let's go ahead and get some stone going once again. Cancel the sheep. Bring in the stone. Alright. Okay, so, because Uboa is going to be a tax area, let's go ahead and get to work on this. So, uh, Cyclos needs to have a mine for the iron. What else? Uh, farm for the fish, lumber camp, that's actually all my money right there, so let's use the rest for slave micro. Okay, um, let's send over, what do we need here, 12, yes, yeah, so we need to actually send over eight, uh, 7 from Chalcus. Alright, this place is going to need how many? 12 total, right? So it's going to need 8 sent over from Chalcus. And this was all just to relieve the food pressure on 
neck out of which one was a city, so that's the, the main reason for doing it like this. Alright. And send some slaves up to uh, Skiaras as well, with our remaining money. I don't know how many we can move. I think we can move enough. We need to move a total of um, seven up from Chalkis first and foremost. That's actually it. Um, and then from Oreas, which doesn't need this many slaves. Alright, that's 12. There we go. That's actually exactly all of our money, so there we go. Switch back over from stone to livestock. This is a little boring, I, I know, to maybe some of you, but this is the important work we're doing in this campaign. Alright, good. Good, good, good. Alright. You... And now we continue. Also, more ports are being finished. Lily the Biome's uh, infrastructure is, at this point, now fully built up. So I can, once I have uh, the right policy set uh, for a cheaper cost, uh, build more ships in Lily Biome at will. That's pretty good. Now 75 is more than enough. Minister of Excellence, Manius Claudius, in a fine display of financial acumen, has made significant alterations to the national budget. We should expect to see much better revenue this year. I would like to have the 10% national tax, please. That sounds pretty good. Oh yes, that does sound pretty good. You arrive here and just reorganize for a couple months, just so we don't have partial morale going in here. We have a religious advance, a seven, omen power, 1% increase, and another invention. We can now finally get military patronage it's a founder for Fabia Prima. Wish I get one on the other Fabia Prima because she's younger, but this one's fine. Monthly corruption minus 0.02. That's pretty good. And cohort loyalty chance, uh, lo cohort loyalty gain chance minus 5%. The relationship between generals, soldiers, and veterans should be extended to include an official system of patronage. This will broaden our hierarchical society even further. And we can also at will get Julian Calendar, which would be quite good as well. But once we get uh, scientific patronage, we're going to have enough to then grab. Um, Kiranomia and also Patrokinia right away, so we're nearly there. 266 uh, research is pretty good as well. Alright, maybe wait a few more months here. Also, in terms of what's going on in the world, Lemawikia is holding on now, Wasconia is doing quite well, we've got uh, Wokontia who kind of moved in and, and displaced Insubria, so previously I was excited to fight just one tribe. Also, um, looks like Eritrea is uh, completely gone, or Eritrea? No. Um, Etruria. No, actually, they're not completely gone. They just look the same color as Etruria. But Etruria is not gone. It's not Eritrea. That's <laughs> in Africa. Etruria is still here, and they survive. But um, not for much longer, probably. They seem to be having some problems. Either way, um, we're not going to focus too much on this right this second. I don't have any claims on them. Do I have claims on these guys, by the way? I do, actually, on Pieria. But, ooh, hold on. Oh, wait. No. They have a claim on me, but I do have a claim on Dalmatia for some reason. Take Liburnia. I don't know exactly how I have this claim, but I guess I could go to war with these guys before my mission tree advances further. Not a bad idea. Let's continue for now. Our commerce economy is definitely growing quite a bit here, so that's pretty good. Over uh, 50 gold per month is a great spot to be at. That's one full road per month if I was so inclined. <clears throat> Let's just uh, save our money for now. Maybe one more tick, and then we'll depart. Don't want to go crazy here. Crete has uh, sent their forces back. Good job, Crete. Oh, look, Crete actually is fighting the barbs. Okay, I was about to say, where's the rest of their armies? They're actually up here, up to sh some shenanigans. Also, um, I wonder if uh, the Lissa Mocked Kingdom will uh, retake this. Probably not, because these guys are clients to Ptolemaics, so... We shall see. No wars for these guys either right now, so let's keep an eye on that. <sighs> All right. Okay, what's my stone? Full 500 or something score of Anarotopra. That's pretty good. How's Mario doing? Not well. Not well. 
They'd probably have gone here. Yeah, let's go ahead actually now. On the boats, we depart. Now, what's the plan here? I think we just land at their capital, wherever it is. I guess it's up here at Cirrus. Actually, their capital is technically in Delos. But Cirrus is my, my tile, never mind. I'm uh, actually stupid, <laughs> as it turns out, if you haven't noticed yet. Who lives here? Oh, this is a uh, Kos, I think. Yeah, I don't care about them at all. All right, let's uh, sail over and just land and blockade their port here and land in here. Uh, Pontus, for some reason, has its navy here. I don't know how or why Pontus has its navy over there. They don't actually have any coastal territories, so... Actually, no, I'm wrong. They do. They have this stuff over here. But for some reason, their navy is, like, hanging out in exile in this spot. That's pretty bizarre, but shouldn't matter. They're not going to be in this war, so that shouldn't be a problem. Right around we go. Okay. Do we just go to war right now? We'll wait for the monthly tick on the boats, and then we'll declare and just go on in. Okay, here we come. Uh, take Cyclades. They're joined by Kos and Militos, which is not a problem at all. Our navy, even at not entirely full morale, should be completely fine. They're not attacking this navy no matter what they want to do. Alright, in you come. And we'll just take this directly and take the whole province in one full swoop and end it there. No need to bother going into Asia. That's not going to be uh, the right move for me. So that that was actually considered not a good attack to make, but for some reason, they're just going to flee. Although, once we land, I'm going to move my ships back around and blockade them. Their, their navy should still stay in port, because they're not going to want to be out of port with my navy in the war at all. So 9th of December, we'll swing around and block them from going any further along the islands. There, we put them under siege at Delos. But you try to blockade them here before they get onto Uboa. We'll see if we can catch them in time. This should actually stop them from making this move here. It did, okay, good. They're allowed to stand here on this island, but I don't want them to really proceed beyond this into my unfortified core up here. That wouldn't be great, so we'll leave it at that. Now, also, I should use my PI whenever I have any more of it to adjust these policies again. Um, should I actually switch these over to harsh treatment after all? I kind of think I maybe need to. <laughs> this just isn't enough. Rostus is not as uh, good as I thought he might be. It probably would be better just to switch out Rostus. Now that he has a brain injury, for whatever reason this happened, and he has diphtheria too. Yeah, he's on his way out. Sorry, Rostus, but this is not going to work. Uh, I don't have any good alternatives, though. I have to poach. Who are we poaching today? Um, Manius Claudius looks promising. Very corrupt, though. It's from corrupt, so we can't do sanctions, so he is not going to be a governor. Anybody else that has any finesse in this goddamn republic, someone please. Zero finesse on this guy. It's got to be somebody that's got good finesse. Who's not Archimedes. How about my other governors? Anybody who's got good finesse. Alright, Gaius Claudii Rusus would be an okay option. He would be an okay option. But then I need a good governor for Greece as well. Alright, um, Appius Claudius Bulcher would be solid. No corruption problems. He's lapsed, but he's also cautious. Friend of the rival of the ruler, that's not great. He's in very poor health as well. Oh my god, alright. Oh, this is brutal. <laughs> There's just so few good characters to work with. I literally have all, like, male and female characters are all allowed to be in positions, and yet the finesse brain drain that plagues every campaign that I have is just continuing. <sighs> Alright, uh, who's this? Sardan. But she is Hellenic, so this would be potentially okay. Sertor Fabius Gerges, we could bring him in. Could bring him in. Six finesse just isn't really worth it. I mean, this guy has seven finesse, so it needs to be someone with higher than seven finesse. I think we just wait for him to die, and then we replace him. I just don't think I can justify doing it right now when he's gonna die anyways. So I'm just going to leave this all alone. He's ailing, he has a lot of health problems. I think his, he's on his way out. Okay, over in Macedonia, um, these places need to switch over to... Uh, let me think about this. Chalkidiki. Needs to switch over, honestly, to assimilation. This is maintainable. Anything under 0.30 
uh, decline is maintainable on something that's not a loyalty policy. This one here I'll just keep as it is. Until it's positive, then I'll switch it. Alright. Thessaly needs to go on to... I really want to start using local autonomy more. It's not as effective as harsh treatment, but it's less damaging. And we get more from the, the province doing it like that. That's it for now, I guess. Alright. Anyways, down here. The siege continues. Yeah, Pontus is sailing away. <laughs> right, if I go back to the own land. Yeah, this is a very large fort, by the way, that's here. But, hold on, level 4 fort? Oh my goodness. Level 4 fort, is that so? Give me just a quick sec, let me check something here. I guess you can build uh, more than three forts in one tile. Is this different from the base game? Hmm. Well. I may just have to siege this one. And without my navy here to blockade, this could be a little uh, tough. Here's what I do, actually. Let me leave behind my one trireme in this tile. And then the rest of you will come back over to blockade this. Because this one trireme will block the way. This shouldn't be a problem. They're going to enslave my people. Yeah, go, sure, go for it, whatever. Wash me care deeply. Just kidding, I won't. Uh, we have another trader available. Actually, we have a bunch of traders available when we lose. <sighs> I wish it would tell me what I lost, because I, I cannot tell what I lost. Oh my god, alright. Um, what do I... I'm going to think about it like this. What do I want in for surplus? We already have iron surplus. Don't need horse surplus. Don't need wood surplus. I guess I could get wood surplus for the spearman bonus, but don't think that's necessary. Uh, let's see here. We could get surplus of cedar at will, which is pretty good before doing shipbuilding. Do we have, uh, what do we lose? Do we lose papyrus? No, we have papyrus still. We already have incense. We have plenty of gold, so it's not that. We have gemstone surplus. What did we lose? We could get earthenware surplus. I don't think we had that before. Was it olives? No, we have olive surplus. I don't think I need woad. Uh, is it dyes? We have dye surplus already. I don't know what we lost, actually. I can't tell. Well, I guess I'll get earthenware for the National Freeman up, but let's trade with uh, Maria for now. And one more slot as well. I guess we'll reestablish glass trade with the Iberians. I just don't know what I what I lost there. So, also, let me go ahead and do a quick round of trading uh, for places that have extra trade routes. Toskia, let's trade in some additional gold. Just trade in gold by default. Um, and then back over here. A Turnum has a bunch of trade routes available. Let's just trade in a bunch of gold, I think. That looks fine. Also, what's my economy at? 50.57. We'll see at the end what I get up to. Dodecopolis, trade in some spices. Uh, Sardinia, trade in some uh, earthenware, I guess. Uh, unusually rare earthenware in this campaign. Picenum, what do you want here? <sighs> trade in some gold, I think. Alright, that's that for this. Over here, yeah, we have a lot of trade routes available right now. Traded more gold. Apulia. You need some marble, I think. Tarentum. You can trade in some marble as well. Satacuse. You trade in some wine for Freeman Happiness, Zero Tax Province. Same thing with Sicania, trade in some wine. Uh, Lucania, you, if there's any gold left, trade in the gold. Egypt will actually trade with me, that's good to see. And then that's it for Magna Gratia. Macedonia, a mafia, you are a manpower province, I believe. So, 
Let me check that really quick. Not that it matters a lot for this, but just to be thorough. Yeah, manpower. I was right about that. Um, I guess I could trade in some opium may as well. Um, the Freeman Happiness. And then, let's see what else. Illyria Grake, your manpower for sure, so trade in some wine for Freeman Happiness. And then, that's the wrong button. What is this? In Greece, we have a lot of Greek trading available to do. Athens, or rather, Arcadia, which is going to be, as I noted before, manpower. Switch you on to, let's see here. Uh, put you on a local autonomy, actually. And then trade in some, trade in some gold, because this is a new conquest, so we need to get some additional citizen happiness for sure. And then Uboa, trade in, just trade in more gold as well. Try to get this stuff under control. Um, or Achaea, you're going to be manpower, so you trade in, trade in stuff for nobles. Actually, just for, don't worry about its eventual purpose. I seem to get the nobles happy here. That is a huge priority. Yeah, this is going to help a lot, actually. Um, Laconia, oh my gosh, yeah, this needs to be fixed. Uh, what are we working with here? We need some noble happiness here, pretty bad. Trade in whatever marbles left and trade in some spices. And that should be that for Greece. And then any trades here or here? No, all right, what's my economy at now? 52, okay, a little bit of an improvement, but pretty minor. Anyways, I'm gonna go through later and adjust everything again once I look at it more closely. I didn't look at this between episodes. I don't wanna bog down this episode too much by doing all that right this second, but for now, should be fine. Let's give this a tick and then see if we get a breach. Um, even without a breach, this should be fine to do an assault. Maybe. Maybe not, actually, given the, the size here. May just have to wait this one out. But uh, that is what it is. Aqueduct is on Roma. I forgot that I have a bunch of aqueducts queued up over here. I could uh, destroy some of those, or not construct some of these to get some extra money, but I don't think that's ultimately necessary. Give it another tick, and then I think I'll do an assault if uh, it's taking too long. Martial advance as well, morale of armies and navies, and maintenance cost decreases too. Here we go. All right, so now we can go ahead and grab a scientific patronage for two innovations and the Sponsored Scholar's Authority Law. Research points 10% from this. That's going to be worth quite a bit. Our influence on the regional stage demands that we pr prove our beneficence by sponsoring the patronage of popular or skilled natural scientists. Very good. We can now go ahead and with the two that we've gotten from this, grab uh, Chironomia. So monthly tyranny minus 0.01, that's quite nice. The traditional hand signals employed by those skilled in rhetoric give our words a weight and believability, which they previously lacked. And finally, Patrokinium, monthly PI, 25%, loyalty of characters plus two. The protection offered by the system of patronage establishes legal and financial security. We should encourage this behavior among our more benevolent elites. 2.48 right there. That is good to see. Okay, very good. We proceed. Oh, there's that breach. All right, here we go. I'm going for it with the breach. That was really lucky right there. Yeah, we are definitely going to get a very easy siege right there. All right. I think while we just wait a sec for this all to transfer, then we just win the war like that. Don't really want to uh, mess around. These guys keep lowering their naval strength. It's very strange. Where are the Silicons up to? Not much right now. Okay. Oh, Armenia, I think, fully killed the Ariarathids. So, yeah, I think Ariarathids are completely dead now, but Armenia is uh, returning to strength. I could potentially, as one way to potentially um, strategically weaken the Seleucids, I could ally with Armenia, which was something Rome did in real life, not against the Seleucids, but against Parthia, who in real life supplanted the Seleucids. Parthia, by the way, um, could still be formed by Dahe, so we could see that later, but we'll see what happens with that a bit, whether they do their mission trees or not. Armenia could be a good ally for us if we befriend them, which would take some work. Possibly. This is possibly a good idea. We'll hold off on the idea for now, though. 
Don't want to commit to anything too soon here. Should be noted that Armenia is themselves a major power, like ourselves, Seleucids, and Ptolemaics. They're much, they're very much kind of a lesser major power, but they are a major power, so they are not to be underestimated. They have a lot of territory and plenty of population to work with. Nothing near what we're dealing with, you know, the big three, but Armenia is still a notable power. Um, Carthage, by the way, is sort of about twice as strong as Armenia, but still weaker than me and the other, uh, the successor kingdoms, so just for context there. We have a naval battle happening here. Yeah, they're going to get pushed out. This should be completely fine, even with our not full morale. Claudia Tertia died in Farcante Delicto, head of the Claudia family. Take a look at that in just a second here. First, a massive naval victory. We uh, killed everyone and also captured some of their ships too. Sounds fine to me. Also captured their guy. He can go free. That's fine by me. At least this guy. All right. And then these extra triremes we will keep for now. So we'll, again, use the triremes in our navies. You just do right there for now. Once this all transfers, we win the war. Here we are. Sue for peace. Give me all of Cyclades. That is all I want. Ionia and Sporades are both in Asia, which means I don't want them right now. This is going to be a cheap deal, and I will go for just this. Nesoitic Cyclades to Rome. There it is. All right. Banish those a class. And with that, I own all of the Greece region, except for Crete, which I sort of indirectly own as a client, so that is a huge relief to finally be at this place. Um, I'm going to actually keep this levy raised to use it for roading while it's over here in the, the Greece area. Um, I can't row between islands. Let me go ahead and actually come back over to Chalkis. Actually, here's a better idea. Let me pick them up and bring them over by boat to Chalkis. They'll start roading around all the Greek area now that I control it entirely. And over here in the Cyclades, harsh treatment is, I think, necessary at the minute. As for these new tiles, Delos is a city on the hills, which means it's going to go, although maybe not quite yet. For now, I can at least make some money destroying this extra stuff I don't need. Uh, yeah, this can go. As for what I say Cyclades would be, let me check my notes here. I'm not necessarily always following the notes a thousand percent, and by notes I just mean literally like a list of, I don't know if you can see on the camera here, it's like a list of the different um, provinces and my, my goal for them. But it's more so like a good guideline. Now that I have so many territories to work with, I'm going to forget if I don't take notes. Cyclades is going to be tax-oriented, yeah, and this is a base metal tile, so yeah, let's get rid of all the infrastructure here, all these forts can go and whatnot, the academy, the port can stay for right this second as I'm picking up these guys, but then I'll get rid of it after that. Um, what do we have here? A farm for the fish. That's a good start. Uh, what do we have over here in Seraphis? Uh, blacksmith. I'd rather have a mine here, but we will have something similar. Get a gold mine down here in just a second. Glass over here. Thada has silk. What do we do that there? This is hills as well. This is also silk at um, Atticusine. And then Naxos as a city. Not sure I'll keep that. I'll have to figure out where the city should be, actually. Mine for the base metals, that's good. Okay, here's a question. Where should the city or the capital be in uh, Cyclades? Let me look at the terrain here. Hills, 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 and hills. So it's all hills, so I have to have a hill city no matter what I do. Or just not have a city and just have a hills, you know, fort. Um, although I'd rather have it also be a port, given that this is an island chain. In terms of which area would make the most sense, um, given how all the tiles connect together, arguably Naxos is in the best spot, or Naxos now in Latin, given that it is um, kind of, so it's in this central sea tile for the Aegean, or it could have it be at Thera, because Thera as a silk tile is probably going to be in the best position to be a noble, or I mean, sorry, a city location, because we want to have a lot of slaves in the city to get extra silk. You could also do this with um, Aracacine, but I think Thera is a bit more interesting, although it is too small, so maybe not Thera. Actually, this is also too small. Or these are not too small. Some of these aren't too small, but some of them are too small. That's a pretty bad penalty when we do have it. Yeah, 50% reduced. It's gonna, it can't be at Thera, I guess, ultimately, is the uh, point of that, which means places that are not too small, so I'm guessing Delos is too small. Yep. So I guess Naxos would probably be the best, although it would be a marble mine otherwise, which I kind of don't want to get rid of. Could just have marble coming out of the city, though, with enough slaves. Okay, what's not too small and doesn't have an amazing resource? 
that I would miss out on. I could put it here in um, Eos, which isn't considered too small, even though it's a mixture of different islands. Uh, even Cirrus isn't too small with fish, though. I kind of want it to be at Thera, though, because of the uh, the centrality of this sea tile, and it would definitely be in this sea tile because of Thera being entirely in the sea tile. But being too small is pretty punishing. That being said, I don't need it to be a massive city, and what I could do is have Thera be the capital city, but just have a port and a fort and not really have any other infrastructure. That's not a bad idea. I think this is a really interesting spot for this sort of, like, middle of the sea outpost. And Thera, if you know the history, has some interesting history as a, a Greek island and volcano. So, that being said, too small does feel like a very punishing thing for that. I could just keep it at Naxos, honestly. It's really not a bad idea. Or I guess move it to Naxos, technically. Yeah. Hmm. Naxos already does have some interest. Let me just move to Naxos. Naxos is probably the best way to do this. That being said, I won't be able to get Surplus of Silk without Thera being a city, and having Surplus of Silk would be quite nice. I think on that basis, even though this won't be a big city, it will be bigger as a city. So, let me move it to Thera, after all. And then, I'm going to build a... Well, first I'm going to trade for stone, and then I'll do some building. Cancel out the sheep. And bring in the stone. Okay, so in Thera, I'm going to go ahead and first of all build a fort, and I need to make it a city. Um, this will cost me 25 PI, so I need to wait for that. Aside from that, in Naxos, this should be a marble mine, ultimately, so let me go ahead and destroy the infrastructure here, and I'll demote it later. This is already a mine, this, I'll make the slave estate, this should be a gold mine right away, let me get this built immediately. And the rest of this I'll attend to later. It's not a huge priority right now. Um, let me go ahead and switch back over to... No, not you. Switch back over... Not you either. Switch back over to trading in livestock and not stone. Okay, good. You lay in and pick up the boys, and we'll take them over to do some roading in Greece. Disloyal, are you? Is that right? What's this? 77? Oh, we became a family head. Shoot. Okay, that's not good. This guy is now... I can't wait for this guy to die. I have to get rid of him. I have to get rid of him immediately. He's become disloyal and he's leaving troops. Alright, I'm giving you free hands and immediately firing you. I don't like doing this, but it has to be done. Get the hell out of here. Now, the problem is I don't have anyone good to replace him with. Do I, do I move over the Greek governor? Lion Finesse, that's going to be handy. He's super wealthy as well. Hmm. Alright, um, I don't really... Greece is such an important province as well. I need to have a replacement for him, though. Megnagratia needs a better governor than Greece, ultimately. Well, uh, yeah, I think so, actually, yeah. I think so. Is there anybody with any finesse in my entire goddamn republic? Anyone? Who's not extremely corrupt, not you, Manius. I guess Gurgis has seven, but he's really old. Oh my god. Um, why do I have to have Fa Fabia Prima the Younger, who was a great governor? Like, as soon as she became the co-consul, everything fell apart on the finesse front. Like, this is just brutal. Having her stuck in here with me. I think I said last episode I was going to try to keep her from being co-consul to avoid this exact situation, and I didn't do it. Man... Can't she just be a governor while she's co-consul? Come on, give her a special dispensation. Ten finesse. Ugh, I weep. My my tears. My eyes overflow with tears thinking about how much finesse is locked up in this useless position. I have to wait four more years for her to be free. All right, maybe it's time for Archimedes to become a governor. Forty-seven is not that old. He is Sicelian, but he is Hellenic. I think my my age of useless and unhelpful racism has to come to an end here. We need to bring in some non-Romans to do this stuff. And as a Sakeli, he's not even really like, you know, a mainland Greek, so it's different. But I think Atticomedes is going to become the new governor of Megana Gratia. Has to be done. 
He's got so much finesse to make use of, and I'm going to make use of it. We'll replace him with, um, I guess, uh, I don't have a good finesse character to replace him here, though. All right, let's do this in a bit of a complicated way. I'm going to, first of all, let's see here. Yeah, let me first recall the Rosas. Well, hmm. Uh, uh, okay, you know what? Um, I can justify lower tech bonus for now. Let's put, um... Oh my god, alright, um... Just think about this. Does anyone have any good traits for being a researcher? I wish I could see this from this screen. Just trying to eyeball it. You do, yeah, Cornelia Secunda. And the, the Cornelia, I would still be happy if I did that. Alright, here's what we're gonna do. I'm dismissing you, and I am going over to my research thing. I'm replacing Archimedes with Cornelia Secunda. There we go. Okay, so 90% with Intelligent, that's fine. And now, uh, we can just put anyone we want into Wulnarius, that's not a big deal. Now, over here, um, former Consul um, Rusis, you're getting fired. Archimedes, the Greek, will come on in. His stats are very good, by the way. Uh, scholar as well. No corruption, good loyalty. <sighs> Alright, I'm putting my faith in you, Archimedes. You're my first, as I can remember, non-Roman governor. Well, he's considered a Roman minor character, but he's not culturally Roman. That's fine. You have good loyalty, so that is what matters. We're also leading the troops now, by the way, so it just heads up about that. Please, 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 don't screw this up for me, Archimedes. I'm putting my faith in you. How did you change all the policies? Okay, this is actually not so bad. Um, Tarentum, I don't know what you're doing with Tarentum, but... The rest of these, getting these places up into loyalty is, I think, a priority. Um, Lucania and Seculia can be switched over to assimilation once we have enough PI for this. Seducusi and Tarentum should also be on assimilation, to be completely honest, but let me attend to this first. So what's the highest population here of these of these four? Um, it would be Tarentum. Tarentum needs more Romans, so let's switch this over to cultural assimilation, and that's it for now. Okay, and now let's assign a new Wulnarius, because we can just keep this guy here for now. Nine Finesse is going to have to be the best we have. We can put Rusus in this position here, but I kind of don't want him to have... Actually, well, he should be loyal once we... Now that we've removed him from commanding forces, his power base went down, so let's just put him in here. Yeah, he's fine now. Okay, so you can just retire into this position. This guy, I swear. He, did, he was so good for me last episode, now he's causing me so many problems, but... Doing what we can here. All right, um, you just wait there for a sec. You go ahead and board. Start around, pick up this guy here. Then we'll go uh, deposit the fort. Well, actually, we'll deposit them in uh, Gideon where they can road their way northward. That's the plan. Now go deposit them in Gideon and then we'll start roading. And we'll just road where I plan for cities to be eventually. They're not all going to be there quite yet, but for now, this will be fine. Continue trading. Okay, and now the Tempest Classis can return to its home port of Lily Bayam, where we can finally start doing some naval reorganization. You get to roading. Build a road from here to Megalopolis, to Argos, to... Um, Corinthus, and then to Athene. This is going to be the core road of my southern Greece area. And then we'll come back and fill in the blanks later to build over to Messena, which will be a city later, over to Elis and, and whatnot. But this is the starting point. All right, while they're doing that, you guys come on over. Aims of Popularis realized. The partisans of the Popularis are practically falling over each other to congratulate Consul Fabia Prima for defending their interests in the Senate of Rome. Pandering to the desires of the common people has increased the support we can expect from them for the time being. Don't know what I did, but I guess I did it, so good job me. Bonnie are actually pretty mad at me right now, but that shouldn't be a big problem. They have very, very good trend. Optimatists are pretty happy with me at the minute. They want me to do what? Province fortification in Tarentum. Don't think that's going to be very necessary right now. Looks like we got Scipio coming in now. Okay, this guy's even worse. <sighs> these are both not great options. Um, or these double Optimatus. I guess that makes sense with the control amount. So I think an Optimatus consulship next episode is kind of unavoidable. I'd rather have this guy be the main consul with his nine marshal. 
I guess we can have a like a cooldown console ship with super good finesse, I suppose. That would probably be, or I mean, super good uh, charisma. I guess that'd be okay. We would have some decent marshal coming in from him for the national effect. So, next console ship might be a, a completely peaceful console ship. I guess we'll see. All right. Road, so they can put the base medals. Also, I think although I could wait to switch my policy, I just have so many things to suspend PI on. I think the waiting's in. We're gonna start just building those hex arrays to replace. We're gonna set up two full navies, as I alluded to earlier, and a 40, for now, 40 Liburnian transport fleet. It's gonna have to grow to carry the Italian levy. It's gonna have to basically more than double it eventually, but we'll get over to, to uh, Lily Biome and go from there. Although first, I can build the navies right away. Let's go ahead and just order um, three hexarays. Where are they being built? Please be built here. Where are they being built? Over here. Uh, right, you know what? Let me actually change this approach here. Let me build them just in Lily Biome manually. Oh, I can't build them in Lily Biome. That's, that's right. Okay, never mind. That's why they're building over here. All right, fine. We'll do it like that. Hopefully no pirates interrupt me. So we have our 40, so 20 and 20 hex arrays for our two navies. There we go. Swing around. <sighs> okay, and then I keep changing these policies. Static, you say, is also in a position to go over to this. There's actually quite a few, actually everyone's Hellenic, so this is fine. Everyone's Hellenic over here. Okay, and then we can do another one next month. Okay, let's start splitting. All right, so first of all, all of the Liburnians are going back over to Ostia. Actually, uh, let's send them, let's have them go to Corallis, I think. So I can raise my Italian levy in Corallis. That's probably the best spot to raise it for most situations right now. I'll just have them go to Ostia because it's nice and central. Call this the, um, let me look at my Latin translator on my other screen here. Give me just a sec. Latin translator. Right. Classes. Transportare uh, Italia. All right, let me come up here. Make sure I spell that right. Yep. Good. No admiral for you. This other fleet doesn't really need an admiral either, to be honest. Not you. Not you. Um, do they really already have enough positions, though? That's a question. This would save me some money if I fired him. They do, okay. Yeah, this is fine. This guy's been pretty loyal to the state for many years now, but I can just rehire him later. It's gonna save me some money on the costs. Also, lower all my maintenances. I should probably remember to do that a bit more regularly than I do. That's fine. And um, Tempest Classes will get reorganized into Classes 1, uh, based out of um, Lily Biome, and we're going to split away 20 of these hex arrays. Actually, I'll split away 17 so the other hex arrays can go join them. And this will be classes 2. And I think for now, do I put them in Lupe? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because um, my next wars will be in this area, so we'll put them in uh, Lupe. By A, head over here, and these hex rays we can finish. We'll move over, and then we'll decommission all the the fort or all the uh, the port, or sorry, the <laughs> what am I trying to say? We'll decommission the um, extra port capacity over here. May actually no, we won't because we keep port capacity for tax and manpower stuff. But either way, we'll build up the port stuff in Loop A once we get there. That's what I'm trying to say here, and then that looks fine to me. And then I wish it was in the other order on my controlled navies list, but that is uh, not a big deal. 
We proceed. 77,000 manpower now. That's going to keep raising as people get happier. And organized. There we go. Looking good. On you go. After the monthly tick. So let me lower. Or lower. Let me get rid of that thing there. Okay. Um, let's see here. Alright. Lucania. Let's switch over to cultural simulation. Seculia is next. All right, very good. Road continues. 62 gold per month with one of my armies raised. That's pretty good. I think they're definitely getting into a nice uh, upward spiral for the Rome campaign. Word has arrived that this year's harvest was exceptionally good in the territory of Gideon. Whilst the merchants may be holding their heads in their hands, the people rejoice at the plummeting price of bread. It's a lot of money right there, and Bonnie approval, but the three stability is also worth a lot at the minute. But the money is also worth a lot at the minute, too. I think with these uh, these sort of uh, ratios, the money and the approval is actually worth it right now. Let's just get the money and uh, use it pretty soon here. My Italian levy ready to go. It is ready to go again. Grand Theater and Lily Volume is done as well. Very good. You are being built over here, aren't you? Yeah. That's uh, not correct, actually. You go over here. Actually, wait, what is this? Single hex ray. Uh. Oh, I guess it was built over there. Yeah, you come over and join this group here. That's fine. Also to save money, I can lower corruption on the most corrupt characters for free, or without a loyalty cost anymore. So anyone, so you won't do it because you're um, crafty or something. Anyone else that's over 15 corruption, I can do this with. You, yeah, you're also crafty or whatever. Um, you are not corrupt enough. I feel like 11 corruption is enough to do it, but what do I know? Anybody else with extreme corruption, you, I can't do it with. Nope. How about governors? You I probably can't do it with. Nope, cannot. Okay. That's fine. No other cost saving measures there. What I could do to save a lot of money, given how extreme my wages are, is I could technically go down to reduced wages, but this will cause a corruption explosion. And for non-governors, this is not a huge problem. But for the governors, it is a huge problem. And I don't have enough anti-corruption to justify this. I could alternatively increase the wages to lower everyone's corruption, but most people don't have a lot of corruption right now, so this isn't unsustainable at the minute. I think this is fine. What I could also do, by the way, is increase the tribute I get from Crete, which would make them like me less, but they like me plenty, and I'm not really having problems with their loyalty at the minute. So this would honestly probably be okay, and this would give me a fair bit more money. Well, that's just not worth that much, honestly, so let's just keep it as it is. No need to mess around with that. All right, you finished the roading. Very good. Let's go back over and road now over... Um, let me think about this. Let me road from Megalopolis to Ellis, and then we'll probably leave it at that. I'll build a city in Messena later, but for now, Ellis will be the capital. In fact, I can move the capital at will, can't I? Let's move the capital over. Actually, I can't because it's under... Yeah, the, the minimum of 50 loyalty, that wasn't changed by my, my tweaking the code, so I do need to wait for that, even though it's only 5 loyalty now to do it. So Ellis will be the capital, just given some more time, so we'll wait on that. And then uh, this, let's see. I said before, yeah, Ikea is going to be manpower, so I can actually get rid of the non... Yeah, because I when I initially got rid of stuff in Ellis, I got rid of stuff to make it a research province, but I changed my mind to make it a manpower province, so... This stuff here actually can go, to be completely honest. And for what it's worth, let me go ahead and do some more building, I think. Let me get um, some stone going. I'm about to have an Optimatus consulship next episode, so I need to do my building in this episode if I can. Uh, let's keep focusing in on Syracuse and uh, Seculia, I think. Also, we can switch this now over to cultural assimilation. Very good. This is maintainable. All right, down here, um, this is all going to be tax, of course, so let's take a look at the uh, resources. All right, so these two need to be lumber camps. 
yes, definitely stone is in effect. And we're going to build a lot of farms down here, build a farm there. This can be a farm as well, and this wine stuff can just be slave estates. Alright, um, and then this grain can be a farm also. We need to move some slaves in here, so I think we have vegetables in effect already. Yep, let's also make sure that slave promotion is not allowed in any of these spots. Except for slave estates, where it's not as big of a deal. Um, Alright. Uh, these two need to be disallowed. Let me click it, please. Disallowed. Farm. Disallowed. Farm. Disallowed. Disallow there. It's already disallowed. And then the slave estates are fine for that. And then in the city is fine as well. Okay, and then as for the actual slave movements, what I'm, I'm going to need here. With the farm, I'm going to need... Uh, 12, which means 6 more. So let me move some slaves in here. Um, Agarogentum can lose them for sure. That's not a big deal. Only 3, though. And then there's not a lot to work with here. There's 12. Uh, we need 12 here. Let me fill the, pl the places that are closest. This one's gonna... This one already has enough, actually, so we can ignore that. And then this one here. So we need 7... Seven, seven, and then eight. So let me start over here. From Katana, we can move a lot in. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, and then uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. That's enough. And now all that's left is these two wood tiles for lumber. Um, running out of slaves to work with over here. Uh, where is this? Hold on. Where's this fish tile that I'm targeting? Oh, over here. This, yeah. That is a fish tile, okay. So I have to say, what is this other fish tile? Um, okay. Our move pops over from Milite. That sounds fine to me. I guess we'll, we'll leave one population there. This is pretty dire, but it is what it is. Now we just need, um, I guess I can fill one of these for now. I may need to move some more from the north. Um, I'm going to ultimately need, how much more? Five more. Move them from Manet. And from, well, I don't have quite enough. Any extras I can bring in here? How about from Aklagentum? There are no slaves left over here? Yikes. 12, 10 is what we need here. How about up here? We do need 12. 12, 0 left, 12 here. Okay, we need to move some in from Seculia. There's a lot up here that we can potentially move in here. Or not. Oh, we have some. All right, let's move people into uh, Capitium. We're going to need two more. going to need two and ten. So we're going to need 14 more. So first of all, into this location from non from tiles, I'm not going to con congregate slaves. So let's bring in everyone that we can. Okay. And then we're going to move 14 down into Mergantia, just to get this all organized. So from Capitum, all right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that should be enough. Now redistribute from Mergantia, all right, 1, 2, over here, move in 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then the rest from Mavagantia can actually go back north up here. Um, actually, we only need... Well, I guess I may as well, I may as well move two in here. Um, from Mavagantia, one, two. This place is disloyal now, so I can't mess with it, but up here. Yeah, I can't bring slaves out of here, but I think I already have all the slaves made full use of now. And we already did the promotion not allowed fully in here. All right, up here, 
Let's disallow promotion preemptively. We may not have a lot of slaves left or money left to work with here, so we can at least disallow promotion where we can. And then glass, stone, you know, disallow that. What's this? Earthenware I don't care about. This is already set up here. And then the wine and the glass is fine. Okay, so that's sort of all we can do for now. <sighs> Man. But the economic, all this work I'm doing, I know it's sort of slow paced and boring, but all this work I'm doing is giving me this crazy economy. So, gotta just keep at it. Rome requires its money to uh, keep on rolling. All right, am I trading in marble? I am, glad I didn't forget about that. I guess let's go back to livestock. Trade with uh, Wasconia, looks good. Those wascally Wasconians. All right, um, you're heading back over, let's proceed. The coming of the city of Athene. There we go. Our extension of new privileges and investment in the local infrastructure has seen Athene grow from relative humility, in, er, temporary humility, into a true Athenian city. While it still has some ways to go before it can rival the great cities of our age, the past two years have ushered in a new era of growth and urbanization in the territory. Very good. So we've uh, restored the city of Athene, not exactly in its full glory, but it's, uh, it's back, and that's what matters. And I guess we don't have any more money to work with here, so we will have to wait to uh, rebuild anything. But... It's fine for now. Manius Claudius, this guy keeps giving me events just all the time, in his civic capacity, informs us that an opportunity has arisen. One of our most valued temples is in dire need of renovation. With enough investment, the building could become a shining beacon of our benevolence and architectural prowess. Surely this opportunity is too great to miss. What are we dealing with here? Naxus could gain pop output 5%, which I don't really care about. 600 gold is out of the scope right now, so no. But thanks for letting me know about that at least, I suppose. All right, just swing on back down and build over to Ellis. And then that'll probably be good for down here. Then we'll go back up north and build up in the Macedonia, oh, Macedonia area. Here we go. So our goods. We do have a lot of uh, extra goods uh, ready to be exported. Um, how do I show you this very easily? I don't know if there is a way. But you can see there's just lots of like plus ones and plus twos and whatnot just all over the place. So we want to keep exporting. These guys are not going to war with each other, which is good. If they're just static, that works for me. We have another, um, another hex array ready to ship over. Literally ship over. Send over, what's this one called? Is it called the Tarentum? That's pretty uh, on the nose, if that's true. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. And then this should be our last hex array under construction. Looks like it is. I guess they are building over to this guy, so that's why I, that's why I went over like that. Another trade route available over here. Any more glass? Oh yes, there is. Hell yes, we can reach Indiketia. I guess they have glass surplus now. But with the glass surplus, we've got. Or they have a yeah, they have a glass surplus. We now have a glass surplus as well. Civ level five percent across the board. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Let me start addressing these uh, disloyal provinces. So this one here, it's already on Hirsch treatment. Then Daria is already on Hirsch treatment. And Puglia is upward trending. Turpinense is already on Hirsch treatment. I gotta start giving these guys civil rights. These guys are not calming down. All right, who lives over here? Um, a bunch of uh, upset people, clearly, but more accurately. Skordiskians. Yeah, this is not turning around on its own. This guy has eight finesse, so he's doing his best, honestly. How much corruption does he have? Zero percent corruption. You got a great governor up here. Perhaps one that I want to poach, but we'll come back to that later. He's doing his good work up here. All right, Skordiskians. On the basis of uh, being uh, rightly outraged at your status in my nation, let me find you in this list. Oh boy, all right, here they are, Skordiskians. All right, what are we dealing with here? Nine loyalty for Tricredencia. That's pretty good. And this should help with its upward trend as well from the pop happiness. Slave output's not a big deal for this. Roman unhappiness is fine. Um, five stability, though, is a lot, but this is probably what has to happen. Protection against torture, I think this is the way to go for these Squardiskians. Ouch. But with that, what are we looking at now? This is nearly stable. This is almost stable, and this is almost stable, but it's still not stable. <sighs> ah, man. Um, if I were to set up a Roman colony up here, where would it go? 
Let me check that out really quick. Colonial Ventures is definitely done by now. I found them in this list again. Uh, score to Skian. There they are. Modigum, that is the right spot. This is a good spot for this colony to be. It's farmland on a major river with a minor river, and I think it's warm, warm climate as well. Maybe not actually, but that's that's still fine. Let's set up a colony. This will lower their happiness, but this will improve the overall happiness by bringing in Romans. I think this is the way to go. Because uh, they're just not becoming happy on their own no matter what I do. I want to pass them to die. Score to skins. Where are they? There they are. Alright, Madagam will gain colony. So we're going to lose. We're going to go down to 10 loyalties. This could be a, a risk. But I can always give them more civil rights to gain more loyalty so it doesn't rebel. I have to be careful though. This is a big loyalty loss. I guess this will kind of undo the effect of uh, the civil right I just gave them, but it won't. Hmm. I think this is required though to get some Romans up here. All right, Madagum, a Roman colony. The arrival of Roman settlers has hardly endeared the local population to us, but the foundation of a colony in this area is without a doubt the best way to exert control here in the long run. Soon even the local Scordiscian inhabitants will see how our city will prosper and surpass any previous settlements they may have had in this area before the land was confiscated. All right, so slaves moving from places that I need there to be slaves. So Pise is a city, I think. Yeah, it is. Ostia, Roma, and Pise are all fine. This is for the best. Okay, now we're gonna have some problems up here. Hmm. Definitely have some problems up here. I need to build things here, but I can't do that right now. It's not trending down very fast. Ah, oh, man. Um, these guys are all already freemen, largely, so this being on uh, Harsh Freeman isn't as helpful now. I'm going to take a risk here and switch this over to local autonomy, so this is now much worse. However, now I won't be demoting the Romans that are here. What I need to do as well is go over... Yeah, I know there's a rebellion risk. I'm attending to that. Go over to the culture. Let me uh, try to bring the Scordiscians back into the fold a little bit. Um, let me find them in this, this list here. All right, so we're going to ironically give them uh, more rights uh, after reducing their happiness with the thing, but this will add more loyalty to the province. Right of inheritance is going to be fine. Uh, culture happiness 6% from this. The Romans, actually the whole nation gains this in happiness reduction, which isn't great, but I think this has to be done to get this province under control. Possibly also the right to enter contracts, although this doesn't improve their happiness directly. It also makes the slaves of their culture less happy. I don't think this is as worth it. We just gotta hope that we get a granary raid over here or something, because I don't know what else I can do over here. I'm hoping the Romans here help kind of even things out. What I can also do is move the slaves out of here. That's actually probably a good... Actually, I can't, because it's disloyal. Uh, right, okay. Let's hope that I can get this under control. Dindaria is barely worth even caring about, because it's one single tile at the minute. Dardania is now loyal, so we can do stuff up here. And we should do stuff up here. Who lives here? Dalmatians. Actually, who lives here? I guess Dardanians, probably, largely. Can I set up this place as a colony? Actually, I just did colonial ventures, so I can't do that. I should uh, try to get this under control, though. It's, it's almost there. I could give civil rights to these guys, but now our stability is getting too low. I think we just leave it at that. Maybe I should have just let this rebel and just beat it in the rebellion. That would have probably been a little easier, and I have the, the manpower to pull that off, but I don't really want to have rebellions happen at all if I can help it. That would be my strong preference, to say the least. We'll just proceed for now. Hope it gets under control. I might have to switch it back over to Harsh Treatment. I probably made a mistake doing that. Bonnie Agenda Improving the Province of Tarentum. The rich and wealthy Bonnie are looking to Tarentum for their investments these days as they try to improve the general area. So, some say for their own interest's sake, no matter who it is for, Appius Claudius Rusus has managed to convince several senators to follow his line on the matter and are demanding that Fabia Prima take a personal interest in the matter. 80 PI? You're out of your goddamn minds. What the hell is this? I'm in your faction, you stupid fuck. 80 PI? That's, that's brutal. Holy shit. 
All right. What am I losing if the Bonnie hate me? 66. Ugh, this is not, this is not good. I'm not, I don't wanna spend 80 PI on this. That's, that's not gonna work. I'm, I'm dealing with the possibility of Cordiscian Rebellion and all sorts of shit right now. I can't be dealing with this. I'm not spending, fuck you, Bonnie. 16 approval, yeah, suck my dick. You have positive trend, you're just gonna have to deal with it. I'm not spending 80 PI for that. You're out of your goddamn minds. Dude, Daria has low food. This is probably a not contributing to the happiness here, so that, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I gotta switch this back, don't I? Uh, <laughs> I don't like this when there's Romans here, but it's gotta be done. This is just brutal. This is just brutal. What is the problem exactly? It's probably it's just tyranny, isn't it? I just have to lower my tyranny. It just has to be done. Also, these guys finished rooting. Probably they finished a while ago. Okay. Um, wait, they didn't finish rooting. The road wasn't complete. All right, let me finish the road then. Yeah, there we go. And then they'll go back up to rooting up here. We'll just uh, save our money now and just do the roads. All right, a bunch of stuff is done up in the north. A lot of stuff is done right now. All right, my economy is about to go crazy once that gets uh, recalculated. Good. Now let's head back over to Athenae and then road our way north to Thibai and then up to Chalcis. And from. Hold on. And from Chalcis back down is like this, I guess, so. I guess I should road between these as well. Um, this is a little awkward looking, but we'll get that. Well, okay, let's, let's just go to. Actually, I guess we go through this anyway, so let's go through to here and then like this. And then like this. And then like the no. Oh my gosh. Go to here, road to the bay, and then road up here. And then road back down here. That's that's the way. That's the way. Alright. Oh, this ship went over here, didn't it? Alright, let me send that last hex array over to these guys over here, where they need to be. Right, there you go. 85 Italian cohorts now, that's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. This thing could be a crazy legion if I wanted it to be. Oh my gosh, Scholar of the Divine. If we had this uh, on deck when I did that earlier decision, I might have done what the Bonnie wanted, but here we go. Medius uh, Cornelius Scipio has, by all accounts, remained a scholar of the divine man for much of his life. It caused him embarrassment, therefore, when he was discovered extorting a local temple to an egregiously unreasonable degree. Before reprimanding Medius, it must be said it would be expedient to our efforts to influence him if we were to brush this under the table. Uh, Ten corruption is a lot, but we will lose the corruption quite quickly. Minus 0.19 per month, almost enough to counteract uh, free hands, honestly. So, yep, I want the PI. And then immediately... No more playing around. We're getting some goddamn holy sites once we have enough money, which we don't actually have enough of. Uh, what do we need for a holy site up here? Uh, 300 gold for cities. I need some more holy sites. I've been putting this off for way too long. Also, there's some food problems in Rome. I probably need to address this later. Or maybe not later, but maybe right away. I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, first things first. Um, I'm going to cancel um, some of these remaining aqueducts to be able to get a holy site going. Let's go to a holy site in Lewinium. That's not the right button. Here it is. I need 50 PI. All right, let me wait for 50 PI, and then we'll get a holy site. No more waiting around on the holy sites. That has to get finished. Right, good. You finish roading down this way. All right, now the idea is that I can move between these locations in one swoop like this. Good. I could build a road between these tiles, or between these two tiles. I suppose I may as well, just so. Well, no, because it's moving between cities that matters. Moving between the two tiles is not gonna happen that often, usually. It'll be to the city. So from here, from Thibé, we now road our way over to, let's first go north to There. 
This will go in the middle like this, which I guess looks fine. And then go with Lamia. This looks fine. We'll road up here, and then from here, continue roading up to uh, Elimium, and then from Elimium over to Methone, and also to Bela, and then we'll make a little loop like this. All right. Let me do that work over there. Continue trading with the people. Looks good. How's uh, Mario doing? Ashoka is still kicking. That's fine. Trade iron for Mutia. Oh my gosh. Yeah, all these trades are finally coming in. Very good. What are these guys up to? Who's this? Oh. Yeah, good luck reaching those guys from that distance. <laughs> I think you're going to have some trouble. Disloyal characters. All right. Marcus Valerius Corwinus. Corwinus, rather, is added again. But it's not too bad. He does not have any uh, significant power base, so we should be fine. Civil War is avoided for now. Uh, speaking of Civil Wars, Lima Weekend Civil War has ended. Okay. Um, doesn't seem like it is that much of a difference, but sure. If that's what you say. That's what you say. Okay, Civil War is now a problem. It's just this guy. Really? By himself? God, the tyranny is just... Uh, I don't want to spend PI on this guy. Alright. He gets more fish towns to go live in. Where's the next fish tile? Natiolum. He gets a, a thing there. That'll have to do. Alright, I'm saving my PI. I'm getting that holy site in Lowinium finally. I'm not waiting any longer for that. After the monthly tick. <sighs> so trade with the silly kids. Also, we can do this now. Oh, yeah. Mm, I could do this, but no. I will not be swayed. Also, we lost our papyrus trade. Please get that back. <sighs> it's, not, it's not happening, is it? All right. Um, trade in more food for now. I think that's going to have to be... Oh, we can trade in rice? Oh, yeah, Mario grows some rice. Let's get some rice from Mario. That's going to be quite good. Surplus of, rice, surplus of rice would also give us a lot more food as well, so let's, let's see if we can get that eventually. Okay, now I, I kind of want to do this, but first things first. We're getting... Oh, I don't have the money for it. Right, you know what? Canceling this other aqueduct. Still don't have enough money. God. <laughs> All right, you you stop. Please stop. 9th of June, I can't stop you from doing this. Actually, I can't stop you from doing it. One more month, or we cancel something... What do I cancel? Cancel the, the fort down here, actually. That's probably fine. Okay. Now, holy site in Lewinium. Here we go. Who to, though? Probably to... Um, I think I, I do want to keep Westa, I think. Um, let me look at my omens really quick here. Because we already have Yuno in Roma. We already have... Who do we have here? Mercury in Ostia. Lewinium could... Of the remaining options, someone grabbed the Pluto Shrine. This is in uh, Wakantia? Really? Okay, these guys, um, it's probably the, the, the Hellenics that lived there that built it, so we'd have to go sack this to be able to get Pluto. Um, is there anyone I want to replace Westia with? Pop capacity default is really good, though. Kiaris for the food modifier could be handy in some circumstances, to be honest, now that we're at this size. Nothing else is really better than the pop capacity. Actually, Sulis Minerva. She's Hellenic, or I don't know if it's a she, but that would be good for the citizen happiness. But we already have pop capacity citizen happiness from Yuno. I think Westa for the flat stab change is still better. Yeah, I want the pop capacity modifier by default, the passive I mean. So let's get the Westa shrine in Luminium. Looks good to me. Not that we're worshiping her that often, but this will increase her pop capacity modifier across the board, the passive one, so that's still pretty good. There it is. Shrine to Westa. And let's also go ahead and do a bit of a reorganization. We're at zero AE right now. Let me um, let me remove all of my treasures and reorganize this all because we have a lot of treasures and a reliquary. So for these three shrines, and then I'll also, yeah, then we'll proceed from there. So in Roma, first things first, anything that gives me pop capacity needs to be there. Um, I think I removed something that gave me pop capacity. Let me find the thing that that was. Um... Oh, it's going to take a long time to find it in this giant list. Also, we could get some research stuff. Although, actually, hold on. Pop capacity-wise, how are we looking in the Roma? We have plenty of room, honestly. 
I think we're fine to actually go for um, some other stuff here. We have 24 nobles. 66 research from Roma, that's pretty good. Um, okay, what was I doing? Back over to the uh, thing here. Let me just go for, let me be greedy here. So Sanctuary in Roma. Let me get the stuff that just gives more research points, honestly. Yeah, Enquiry into Plants, we'll put that there. Because, yeah, actually, hold on. Um, all these books can be merged together with that decision later on. Yeah, we have Enquiry, we have the History. The rest of this is probably owned by the Selly kids, to be completely honest. They probably also have the, uh, the armor stuff, realistically. But for what it's worth, um, for now, we can still uh, go ahead and go into the Religion tab. We'll put the stuff that improves research rate. So, anchoring the plans for 15% more research points. Actually, let me check and see if there's anything that's more than this. So let's go through everything here. Start from the bottom, actually. Uh, let's see here. Anything that gives more than 15% research points. This UI is not very good. In case I haven't said that before, <laughs> I don't like how this is uh, organized. But Persian spoils, interesting. Some of these are pretty crazy. 10% research points, okay. Anything that's more than 15%. Research points. No. Alright, let's put the two books in here. Written by Aristotle's pupil uh, Theophrastus. This giant work of ten books describes and classifies all plants known to man, along with where to find them, their anatomy, and their medicinal uses. These notes were once used by Theos er, Theophrastus himself when given, giving lectures to his pupils. All right, and then the other book we'll put in here as well, of the two that we have of the collection. Where is it? Um, History of Animals. Written by Aristotle, the teacher and instructor of Alexander the Great, these nine books cover of observations of man and other animals, what separates them and what distinguishes them. It goes into details about how they procreate, their behavior, their diseases, and their or organs. All right, so Roma now should have more than this once it gets modified after the monthly tick, probably. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and put some more stuff in here. So Ostia has plenty of research. Well, it's got 23, but that's still a fair bit, so not to be over overlooked here. Um, Ostia is going to need what do I want in Ostia in terms of treasures that was a good question I let me think about this Ostia, everything's basically maxed out in this province honestly more or less so stuff that improves happiness won't be as useful here stuff that improves output though could be quite good Ostia, let me think about this anything that improves Citizen or noble output would be handy. Let me just scroll through and find anything like that. Possibly there will be something, possibly not. Also something improves loyalty, which won't be useful here. All right, Freeman output. Not needed right now. Okay, noble output 10%. Sarcophagus of Polixena. Let's come back to that later. So we have one 10% noble output. Um Output, current happiness. Any other noble or citizen outputs? Local research points, ten percent. This is probably worth putting in Ostia, to be honest. All right, the we'll put this and then the sarcophagus in there. Let me come back and look at the last things, though. All right, tax rate, Persian spoils, Persian spoils. Little happiness, but not output. Okay, so let me go ahead and put the. Where was it? Um, here it is. The Iconical Graces. These ancient iconical stories to stones rather depict the graces that supposedly fell from the heavens for Etiocles. All right. Then we'll also put these uh, the Pharaoh or the um, sarcophagus thing. Noble output ten percent. Treasure sarcophagus Polyxena desk. All right, but this is the famous description of this item, but that works fine for me. Okay, and then over here in Luminium, because actually, are these treasures uh, tile-based? Are these are these province-based? Latium. Are, tre are treasures not tile-based? Holy shit! 
Are these affecting all of these locations at the same time? There's no way. Uh, hold on. Um, give me a second to figure this out. Latium. Province bonuses. I think these might be provincially like affecting everything. I think after the tick, I have to check this, because I, I don't know right now what, what's going on. Um, either way, um, into Lewinium, let us put some more stuff here. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, I guess if these are uh, entire province-based, uh, it doesn't matter quite as much. I guess um, we'll put the... Let me think about this. Happiness here is already basically completely good. More pop promotion speed. The Philippian statues, this would be fine. A set of, oh boy, Chris Elephantine statues by Leo Caris, depicting the family of Philip II and housed in the Philippian at Olympia, the only structure dedicated to human, well, not anymore. Put them there. And then what else? Um, Statue of Aphrodite for more pop promotion speed, another 15%. If this is province-based, this is crazy. I thought that uh, concentrating my my uh, holy sites in one province might have been a mistake, but if all these treasures affect the whole province at the same time, Latium is about to go even crazier than normal. All right, this marble statue of Aphrodite was once part of a cult center at Aphrodisice, which I think I sacked in Egypt. It was made from marble from the nearby quarries and founded by the donations to the pilgrimage center itself. Okay. Give it a monthly tick, and then let's see exactly what we're dealing with in terms of the modifiers, because if I've just supercharged Latium like this, I'm going to be pretty happy. That would be pretty neat if that's what I did. Also, you can now go back to roading once we have more money. We have enough per, per monthly tick to keep up with the road, so that is pretty solid. Wait for the end of the month, though, first. All right. Get back to it and continue roading up to... Um, Ferre, and then from there, actually, um, slight, yeah, no, continue on like this, and then from Ferre, I probably want to want to merge, or create roads, rather, for all of these cities, but for now, let's just road over to the capitals, and, uh, do it like that. Okay. Magic moment. Okay, Anchor to Plants, History of Animals. Holy shit, my dudes. This is a provincial modifier? I did not know that about treasures. I just I just stumbled into a crazy meta. I can I can put cuz think about this, right? Let's say that I have five holy sites in these five cities and all these are metropolises. That's what is that? 15 treasures? Say that I find 15 research point treasures like at 15% each. That's so much goddamn research in this entire area. Holy shit, yeah, each of these treasures is affecting the entire province. I guess that kind of makes sense because a lot of their modifiers are provincial modifiers, like unrest or um, provincial loyalty and whatnot. So I probably should have realized this earlier, but I've realized it now, and I am very excited about this. Whew, okay. <laughs> My actual god, what are we looking at now? 320 research. Did I just see 266 earlier in the same episode? Holy fuck. Fuck, wow, this is crazy. And we can get sponsored research with the next innovation as well. Oh my god, this is crazy. Holy shit, okay, this is going, this is just, the snowball is crazy. Like, this is like the mid-game snowball right here. I am all for it. Oh man, I love it. <laughs> Alright, and the uh, trades continue to be requested. Very good. Whew. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's Carthage up too. These guys are fighting a revolt. Well, they're gonna win that one. Not too worried about that for them. A bit here after the tick, that's good. Whew. Okay, very good. Logging camps and other stuff is done over here. Very nice. Heading to this. Uh, this all has to say Campania is probably ready to switch over to cultural simulation. Assuming it needs to be on cultural simulation. 34%, yeah, it does. Definitely does. 
that's manageable. That is manageable. Alright, continue. Roading. You get there after the ticks, so this should be fine. Well, actually, you're roading through and passable. I don't know how that works. Actually, you stopped roading back there, so that is a problem. Um, you just, uh... You just actually come up here to... Yeah, you go back over and, and road correctly, please. That would be what you need to do. Stop pirates from sacking my stuff. I can't be can't be helped. Triple Tanya. Interesting, okay. Hmm. Things are peaceful in the east for now. I suppose that's fine. Wait for the tick, then we start roading again once we have uh, enough to do this safely. Road our way over to um, Elim Elimium, rather. And then over here, there were some cities I wanted to get rid of. Uh, Delos, I can get rid of this port now, by the way. I kind of wanted to demote this. I'm trying to run out of tier Let me just finish getting rid of the cities I don't like in, in Greece, and then I'll calm down, I, I promise you. I swear it's over soon. <laughs> Just these hill cities have got to go. Um, and then Delos as well. And then Naxus soon. Not quite yet, though. And then with that, we'll be done. Uh, yeah, we will be done after that. We're so close to being done with this. With all the, the deconstructions. I guess Corinthus as well. I'll, I'll keep Corinthus as a city, though. No, maybe. Well, um, maybe. I'm not sure about that. Possibly I will. Can't the Bonnie ask for me to lower my, you know, lower my tyranny, and then I lose tyranny? That'd be really cool if they did that. That would be swell if that's what they did. But that is not what they're doing. If there was just a way, if I could pay 500 gold for 5 tyranny, I would save money and do that. Like, I, I'm desperate to lower tyranny. Anything I can do, aside from not destroying cities, I will do to get rid of tyranny. Shoring up defenses, the denizens of the territory of Bella have been feuding with their neighbors in Gortinia. Um, okay. As a result, an impressive fortified wall is being erected in Pella, quite outdoing the efforts of their rival. As they say, conflict drives innovation. 500 manpower, sure. I'll take that, I guess. Thank you. Can you road through the pass? I'm not entirely sure how this works. 18th of November, I guess we'll see what we're dealing with here. Yeah, they can, actually. Okay. Well, that's fine. Some more of this. This is all fine as it is. And then, in Italia, do I keep, do I actually keep Latium on Borderlands, which I don't really need to. Latium is providing me with a lot of manpower in total. I can't see the total number because the CY is bad, but um, it does provide me a lot of manpower from all the citizens and freedmen. So Borderlands isn't a terrible modifier for it. But if I put it onto, for example, Encourage Trade, this would give me a lot of commerce because of all the uh, commerce um, income happening here. And also the food would be improved a fair bit. I think Encourage Trade is honestly not a bad idea for Latium. Let me check and see, actually, what's the, um, not, not that, let me see, what is the, uh, promotion situation? Things are, things are kind of stable at the minute, so, let me go for this, actually. This is going to lower my manpower for a bit, and also lower my cohort strength for the Italia levy, but I don't think I need to worry about that as much anymore, and getting the food situation here under control is going to be handy as we're going into winter now. Let me go ahead and encourage trade. Let me see what this does for my economy. 57.81. Actually, first let me switch some of these routes around. I'm gonna cancel some trades to bring in more food. What do I cancel though? I actually have more fruit than I need. Let me cancel one of these fruits. Yeah, I should have, I, I do have capital, prop, uh, capital surplus still. Let me switch over to a grain trade. Actually, do I, do I want the fruit trade or the grain trade? I, mean, I think I want the grain trade. The extra food. Trade with those guys. And then, what else? <laughs> this is all probably needed. Earthenware could honestly go. I think earthenware can go at the minute. Let me trade for grain instead of earthenware. Bring in more grain. Has to be done. Trade with the Iberix. And that should probably fix that up. And then we'll go ahead and switch over to encourage trade. 58.09, it may also increase on the tick. Alright, I think we're going to keep this place on encouraged trade just to keep the food coming in. 
on the tick, let's see what the food situation is once we're in December. So this is going to be one of the worst months for food. Only minus, 0.6, only minus 62, so it could be worse for sure. This is, I think, sustainable for now. But I probably need to reestablish a larger grain trade now that I have so much population here. Like, all these cities are, are pretty big cities, and Roma is extremely enormous. Also, making this a metropolis is something we should not uh, hold off on doing for too long here. I need to save up my PI for stuff like this. But I also need to attend to my other locations that are just loyal. Paonia has some problems right now, really. Hmm, this needs to get switched over then. Switch this over to harsh treatment. That's gonna have to do. Uh, here. Yeah, this place here is uh, dire. Um, oh, we're so close to finishing up with my tyranny expenditures. All that's left now is just Naxus, and then we should be fine. So we're a few tyranny points away from that. And then we calm down on tyranny forever. Well, for until I decide to stop calming down on tyranny. <laughs> I guess being wishy-washy about not being tyrannical is itself kind of a, sort of a reflection of being tyrannical, so that's kind of funny. All right, you actually wrote up here and then make this loop. That's going to uh, be good for up there. And I probably should also road up to these areas up here, because this is now, of course, a colony, so we shouldn't ignore that. Hmm. Now we continue. All right. Carthaginian Civil War ends. Okay. Not too surprising about that one, but good for them, I suppose. We can do some more policy changes. Corsica is fine. Um, Latium, we did that on purpose. Sardinia Australis is, I think, ready to be switched over to. What is it, religion or assimilation? What are we dealing with here? Religion first. Switch this over to religious conversion. That's okay. And then we'll do other stuff after that. Oh, marble. All right. You ran out of money, so try this again. No, actually, hold on. Build the road and then try this again. I don't like how it works when you run out of money. Just right today. We have to do it tile by tile at the minute. Unless we have a big surplus to work with, but I'll just do this the slow way. All right, and then when you get here, after the tick, so you build the road correctly, that's good to see, and then you'll build the road down like that. This also needs to be fortified, but I don't have enough money for that right now, so we'll worry about that later. All right, now you just wait. Actually, you can do it right now. Road to here. 71K, all right. Talia Levy has reduced down to 84 cohorts, which is more than enough for most needs. Not a problem, to be sure. But this road's done. Okay, um, now that we've built these roads, I do want to also road out to the Neapolis Thrakicum. Uh, hmm. Let me actually just wait in Methone for maybe a, a few months so that we can build up some treasury so that the roads are interrupted so badly. It's going to be a lot easier. Is, uh, or at least some infrastructure is finishing there. All right, road your way from here like this. That goes to the fort, that's perfect, over to Neapolis Thrakicum. And then from there, I, th I don't know if we're gonna road all the way north right now. It kind of feels like we should, but that's a lot of uh, money for areas that are not core to our territory at the minute. So we'll wait for now, I think. Conflict of the Orders. In spite of the rights granted to the plebeians since the last succession of 411, tension between the, ple the patrician and the plebeian classes of Rome has been growing lately, partly influenced by the work of Gnaeus Flavius, among others. None of our concessions have dampened the plebeians' determination to secure uh, political and legal, legal equality. 
However, a new political class made up of both patricians and plebeians has been growing, incorporating the middle-income families of the Republic. We must decide whether to promote the expansion of this new nobilatas as a middle ground or given the populist demands for reform. Hmm. Okay, we can choose between some modifiers here. So, approval with the Bonnie certainly wouldn't hurt right now. They have pretty low approval, and it is trending up, but more would be handy. And, um, Patricio Plebeian Arist Aristocracy for 10 years. Manpower 15%, pop promotion speed plus 1, but Freeman Happiness minus 4%. Or, 12% Freeman Happiness for 15 years. That's pretty good. 10 approval from the Popularis, that's a bit wasted. And we institute the Lex Hortensia, which I think is a law. Let me see here. Um, Lex Hortensia. Where is that? Here it is. So we lose out on the 4% Freeman Happiness, but we get 5% Integrated Culture Happiness, and we also get the 12% Freeman Happiness temporarily. And the plebeians will get mad if the integration law is changed before the conflict is resolved, so I probably am stuck with this for a while. 5% more Roman Happiness certainly doesn't hurt, but 4% um, Freeman Happiness permanently is bad to lose. But then also 12% Freeman happiness to have for 15 years would help at the minute. That's for sure. Um, the manpower is not super necessary right now. The promotion speed is handy, but not uniformly. And the Freeman happiness loss from this is not great. I guess we can switch over to this. I think that's honestly okay. Um, yeah, all right, let's go ahead and go for this reform. The Lex Hortensia. Now this should help with things a bit after a tick or so. We could also spend some of our PI on changing a law. That might not be a terrible idea. Going for a senatorial endorsement finally would be kind of nice. Could also get the Punic reform if we really wanted to, but don't think that's super necessary right now. And then over here was this require nine civic advancements, so that's not on the table. Um. Hmm. Hold off for now. And then this should after the tick hopefully improve. I guess we'll see. A turn I'm also without food, I just noticed this. Um That would actually yeah, we could fix this. Cancel the gold trades and bring in the grain. I don't know that I missed that, but that's fine. And then actually, anything else out of food right now? Or, like, low on food? Except from Latium. But Candom has food problems as well. These guys can actually trade. I think just one of their gold trades for grain. That would probably fix it. Anywhere else, because food lo uh, loss is a big cause of disloyalty. Cyclades, although they're going to be fine ultimately. No, everyone else is fine at the minute. All right. All right, come on. How are we looking up here? It's about the same, honestly. Okay, more civil rights for the Squidiscians. I gotta get this, uh, get this attended to. I need to, okay, what I need to do is I need to, to bump this up above uh, 33 if I can to start moving slaves out and building uh, colonias. I think I made a mistake earlier not doing that. All right, let's see what I can do here. All right, Squidiskians, where are you in the list? Any more civil rights? Okay, um, seven for Tricronincia would bring it up to, what would that be, 24? 25, no, 24, five stability. Cultural slave happiness reduction could be bad, though. And citizen happiness for all of Rome is not ideal. Okay, are there, are there any other people that live in this province that would I can interact with through this, this system? It's not the, the right map mode. Trebalians as well. Let's see if I can get some stuff with the Trebalians. That might be another way of doing this. Let me just... Okay, they're right here. Oh. Well, I, I, uh, I've done it too recently, right? Okay. Where are we at with that? Alright, 514. Where else? 
514. So like late October 514. Yeah, October 29th, 514. We gotta wait for that. Okay, we just gotta wait on that one, unfortunately. It's not gonna rebel before that, but uh <laughs> This is just this is dire. <laughs> Man. I'm trying my best here, but I just don't know what else to do. Aside from lowering my tyranny, which I'm not uh, doing very consistently. Alright, 2.50, we're almost there. Then we can revoke the city and be done with the tyranny loss. Alright. I think I saved my PI for now, honestly. Uh, Aspelta Arkamanid has been deified by who? The tribe of Serbotia in Nubia. Sure, if you say so. The 135th Olympiad. Since the glorious days of mighty Atticles, the young men of Greece have every four years competed in the Olympic Games in order to win fame and fortune for themselves and glory for their nation. Held in Olympia, the Games are an opportunity for all in Greece to lay down arms, embrace, and pay homage to their forefathers. As we control the ancient site of the Games, which is, I believe, Ellis. Actually, I think it's in Olympia. That literally says it right there. I am super stupid. <laughs> As we control the ancient side of the game, it is our duty to hold the games this year. We should think carefully before proclaiming otherwise. Um, yeah, let the games be held. Well, I don't know why I wouldn't let the Greeks come on in. Uh, they will send a champion. So we get a sort of fun diplomatic minigame where everyone competes in the games with each other. And there's a, a chance for fun little diplomatic scenarios. All right, these guys finished roading. Um, I should probably road up to Scoopy at the very least, if not also over to my fort at... Uh, Spino, uh, Spinopada. I can run to it from Scoopy, though. Let me head over to Bela and road up to Scoopy while I'm over in this area. I may as well. Um, Appius Claudius Russus died. He succumbed to brain damage at the age of 74. Well, there it is. Um, he was the Vulnerati the Vulnerarius, Vulnerarius, and a brother to the governor of Moesis Superior, and a friend of the Basilius of Crete, who was the head of the Claudia family. Well, although Rosas caused me some grief at the end of his life, he was a very successful consul back at this point about um, seven years ago. So rest in peace, Appius Claudius Rosas. Thank you for your service. Okay, um, who's this? Gabinia Prima. Oh, new, possibly good characters. She's pretty good for Marshall. But for now, I should go ahead and, well, hold on. Yeah. She can be the well Nevada, so I'm gonna build up her statesmanship a little bit. That looks fine. Okay. On we go. Let's try to maintain around sixty income per month if we can help it. How do you stop moving? Okay. Road up to, or I don't know why I said road like that. Road up to Scoopy. Road is not a Roman word, so. Who's disloyal now? Governor Moses Superior is loyal. Who's disloyal? Well, that's not going to help things. That is not going to help things at all. <sighs> what? Why? What are you mad about now? How? What? Oh, this guy's the new Claudia family head. Oh my god, please, no, please, just, just give me high finesse, loyal Romans. That's all I ask for in this goddamn life. High finesse, loyal Romans that can govern these stinky provinces. Fine, I'll give you a bribe. Ugh. Please. High finesse, loyal, non-corrupt Romans. Do such a people exist in this game? Please. I'm so tired with these goobers. Oh my god, alright. We've got it under control for now. <sighs> oh man, this is just, this is dire. I, I just, I, I don't understand. How can every, every, every single attribute except for finesse be in great supply everywhere? Just, there's no finesse characters in this whole goddamn republic. 
For one of our researchers, Cornelia Secunda thinks she's about to make a notable scientific breakthrough in the research she's currently working on. All that is needed is, to, is more, some more supplies and funds for the next couple of years. To be able to get her hands on some of these, she has personally asked our consul, Fabio Prima, if she can be given access to them. The rest of our researchers would certainly suffer if we were to make this move, but maybe it is worth it after all. Um, no. I don't want to lose that much research rate. I've got plenty of research going as it is. I don't need the bonus. <sighs> Alright. Come on, let me see 60 again. That would be a nice consolation for all my woes. I just I live in constant agony. 15, oh my god. Uh, Alright. Last city I am demoting. Naxos is going. This hill city should not be here. Okay, I can't afford it still. What do I need? Isn't just 2.5? I can afford 2.5. Maybe that's not updated. Maybe it still thinks it's 5. Okay, I'll just wait a bit longer. Actually, no. 2.5. I would need it to be at 97.5 or below, so I actually do need to wait a few more months. Then Naxos goes, and then I let the city, let the tyranny calm down, because I will have demoted all the cities I don't want everywhere. Except for maybe Corinthos, but I'm not going to just demote Corinthos while it needs to be a fort and a port at the same time. Can't move it yet. You can hear eroding. for a second, then rode over to uh, spin a bottle, which will eventually be a city, because it is farmland on a river, just not in a second. Wait a month or two for that. The 135th Olympic Games conclude. The great Olympic Games have come to an end with much rejoicing and celebration. The highlight of this year's games was during the prestigious chariot race, the Sonoris Dredis of Chalcodon, who is um, from Chalcodon, I suppose, Saved a fellow competitor from almost certain death when his chariot was overturned in the dusty mayhem of the race. Overall, the victor was declared to be Aratis Aratides of Bactria, who is, um, is he their king? Who is this? He's just some guy from Bactria. A first-time winner of the Olympics whose brawn, virility, and Heraclean vigor are beyond compare. Also, for what it's worth, as the Romans, we should be calling him Hercules, not Heracles, because that's the Latin, or whatever. And now he will go down in the annals of history as a champion of the Olympiad, a splendid event. Some popularity for Fabia Prima. Nice. I will take it. All right. You start roading your way over to the border fort at uh, Spinopara. You do that. And we spent tyranny on the policy chain, so I need to wait longer. I'm at, I'm at the limit of, like, like I'm prepared to mod in, like, literally an exchange where I can spend, like, a thousand gold for, like, reducing tyranny by ten. Like, I'm at that point where, oh, Fabia Prima has died. Not one of my two current Fabia Primas, I hope. No, this is a different Fabia Prima. Alright, that's too bad. But I feel like that'd be going too far for a mid-campaign modding, but really, like, the tyranny is just so extreme. Just how ever-present it is in this campaign. I know that that's my fault, so like it's not like I'm complaining about something that's out of my control. I'm choosing to be this tyrannical every day. So also you can't finish the move, so if you can just wait a little bit. And then after the tick, you begin moving. There we go. So I know that this is like a self-imposed wound I'm complaining about. Uh, Tutu Mal Malius Senatus from Anna Whiskia was uh, deified, I'm sure. Do you guys want my iron? Yeah, that's fine. Once Naxos goes, we can finally chill out on the tyranny again. Alright, that that is the last city revocation I am doing for a long time. I swear this time. For real, for real. It's not happening. Now Greece is fully set up correctly. We let the tyranny go down and we don't let it go up any further. And that is that. <laughs> this time, <laughs> this time I'm gonna follow my own uh, my own statements. 
Perhaps, maybe a little bit, maybe not. Um, all right, now from Scoopy, we want to go up to Hemium, which would be fastest this way, about like this. Once the road's built, maybe that's still faster. So let's head back over to Scoopy and just road our way north. We may have to fight a rebellion up here at this rate, so maybe uh, getting this northern road done is not such a bad thing to do. Once our stability keeps going up, that's gonna help as well. But for now, we just uh, proceed. And in terms of policy changes, I think everything's looking fine as it is now. This will improve soon, I think, I hope. <sighs> there we go, okay, on. Really? Oh yeah, I guess it needs to be, honestly. We'll leave it at that. Save our PI for now. Having some extra PI certainly would not hurt. We could also found, actually, or not found, but we could make another holy site once we have more money, but that is the, the hard part. Or to perk available, let's go ahead and just grab a Bastards for 10 years. That's pretty solid. All right. Um, uh, let's, I guess we should may as well continue roading up like this while we're in the area. Yeah, probably a good idea. And then how, what's the election going to be at this point? Who are you dealing with here? All right, um, Metius Cornelius Scipio is coming in with his bad stats, but his good oratory, so that's good for the tyranny loss. And we've got Metius Valerius Lepidus joining him, who's going to offer him some better marshals. So we're going to have an optimatis and an optimatis, which means noble output. So we're going to have to uh, save our money next uh, consulship and not build as much, probably. That should be fine, though. Lots of research. I suppose that will be good for the... Um, technology situation. Can't be too mad about that. Alright, let's trade with the glass. These guys are still not fighting each other. Maybe they don't think they can win against each other, which would be interesting if... Hold on. Judea had a, um, had a Yamnat break free. Or wait, did Yamnat win this territory? How did Yamnat get this? I don't know what happened up here. Yamnet just took over Judea's core territory. What the hell is this? Did Yamnet revoke Jerusalem? <laughs> Holy shit, Yamnet. Calm down. Yikes. Okay. Judea just lost their core territory. Yeah, there are barely any Hebrews down here. Judea is in big trouble right now. They only have 100 Hebrews left. I don't know how Yamnet did this, but Yamnet somehow finessed Judea for their core territory. Probably just by conquering it. Yeah, and they just obliterated Jerusalem. Well, I think Judea is uh, on the way out. I don't think they're going to be able to survive without that core ter that core population. Yamnat's going to take them out. I guess we'll see what happens, but uh, things don't look too great for Judea right about now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Alright. How's the food situation looking in Latium? It's okay. Once we're in the summer and fall, it'll hopefully get a little bit better. We have a lot of population to feed right now, though. So that could be quite dicey. Right, finish the road up here. 13th of April. And from here, this is actually the route to get over to this place. But that's not a capital, it's just going to be a fort. So this is fine for now. Um, and then Madagam will be the fort up here permanently. So let's uh, road our way northward up to here. I guess this is the faster way, through the hills and not through the forests. Sure, if you say so. That's fine by me. You just uh, continue on your way. You'll be done after the ticks. That's going to be fine. You may have to wait a month, though, once you get here. Well, you didn't even do it. Love when that happens. Or you actually complete the road, please. Actually, it's not even going to do the road. I guess we're try it, try that again. Come on, Archimedes. I know you're smarter than that. Alright, and now we're right up here. Continue along this route, really. Alright. We're at our manpower max, which is fine. I am not going to go to war just because I'm at my manpower max. There's no need to worry about that. Having the manpower at this amount is uh, already fine by me, so there's no need to get too worried about that. Let's just uh, stay calm and uh, keep calm and carry on, as they say. As they say. 
head over to bow and then wait there to get your your money ready to go for another road. We'll finish roading up to Madagam at least. That'll be handy. Speaking of Madagam. Alright, um, we just have to keep waiting. What I could do as well is I, I could release this as a, a client. That is the ultimate, like, last resort. Let me look at this thing here. I don't really want to do that, though. I could just integrate them later. I feel like we're on the verge of having low enough tyranny to get this back under control, so let's just hold on to this for now. But I could release them in, if, in an emergency if I really need to. I don't really need to have this territory, to be completely honest. But now that I have it, I don't want to get rid of it, so I think we just hold it for now. See what we can uh, get up to later. Hmm, man. Save my PI. Go into the next consulship with a nice bank of PI. That's probably a, a good thing to do. Plus, let's keep in mind, this guy's the Praetor. This is the governor of Macedonia. Yeah, Lucinus is now the, the co-consul again. I don't really want to pay for all the policies again, so I'm kind of wondering if I can have this guy not be the successor. But doing um, Smear Reputation costs tyranny. <sighs> please. Like, Macedonia is such a huge region. Don't leave this region, please. You're fine where you are. Don't do that. Nine finesse being locked up again. I can't keep losing these finesse characters. All right. I've got to do it. I don't even know what the next highest succession support character is. Uh, oh no, this is real pain right now. Don't stop these co-consoles that keep getting. I guess okay. I can put Fabia Prima back into Macedonia, so she at least will be freed up. So we we do have a good replacement character. She's a bit better with Ted Finesse, but I really wish I didn't have to do that. And incidentally, Fabia Prima, the Elder, is also okay as a governor character with her seven finesse. So if in an emergency, I can use her as well. So we'll be fine. I can't afford to spend the tyranny on that. I just I've got to I've got to just proceed here. All right, the road's done. Okay, um, let's have you just return back down here to a Scoopy. Just follow the road once again, and we'll road over to Lissus and get the the road over connection over here uh, set up as well. How is uh, Mario doing? Ashoka's getting pretty old. He's still healthy, but he's getting pretty old. All right, Marion collapse is uh, possibly imminent. I guess we'll see next episode if uh, something happens there. <sighs> okay. Now from Scoopy. Let's road over to Lissus and get a road connected between these spots here. And then in Lissus, we'll road down to um, Ambrakia as well, and possibly make a road connection through this mountain pass over here as well. This will take a bit, though. 87 cohorts over here. Switching off of uh, that didn't really make a big difference. All right, Scandal. Oh, boy. What's going on here? Scandal is unfortunately part of an average day in the Roman Senate. Ordinarily, we would simply ignore such petty squabbles. However, on this occasion, the esteemed Metius Valerius Lepidus was found in flagrante delicte with his lover, uh, Buacquos Aplid, by his spouse, Fabia Prima. That's the co-consul. Okay. Fabia Prima, the spouse, is overcome with despair, has a overcome with despair, has appealed to the Senate to have Metius Valerius Lepidus stripped of office. What's his office exactly? He's the Prefectus Militaris. He's a good character for that. Oh, man. I don't want to lose loyalty on Prima. She's about to be a governor. I can't do this one. Um, I could fire him and just rehire him right away. I think that's probably fine, honestly. We won't tolerate public infidelity. And he gets rehired instantly. Don't look at that. Oh, I could actually make my former admiral. He would be solid for this, honestly. Ooh. Some good young characters coming up as well. Yeah, let me, let me put him in that position, honestly. The tax rate will take a while to build up, but he is a really, really good character with extremely high martial. So once that uh, statesmanship builds up, we're going to be in good shape. That will do. 
that will do. All right. We proceed. The double consulship of Fabia Prima and Fabia Prima is nearly at its end. Speaking of which... Alright. Scipio and Lucanus does seem to be the way things are going. That is fine, all things considered. Could be worse. It could be worse. You have an Optimatus consulship. I suppose that will be okay with me. We'll have some nice PI banked up. Don't have a lot of money banked up, but we have a Plenty of income right now. Hmm. It's just wintertime stuff. Nothing to worry about. Americans got to get here. And then 30th. So they're going to get here right before the tick. That's fine. Okay. Alright. A few more days. Alright. You can just wait here for now. And... Here we come. Oh! Uh. Oh, that, this is a different Appius, Fabius Luc Lucanus. Or this is Lupius, this is a different guy. He was the augur. Well, uh, just in time, <laughs> right before the election. Um, that's too bad. Uh, we'll reassign the position in uh, the next episode, once I am reassigning everybody. Okay, Metius, Cornelius, Scipio, now rules our glorious nation, 2, 3, 10, 6. Optimatus are in control with noble output. He wants to declare war, or I guess his party wants to declare war. On whom, dare I ask? Ocantia. Not a bad idea, actually. We'll come back to that later. But we have got uh, Scipio and Lucanus in the consulship. Um, this will... Oh, that, that part's pretty good. The charisma is quite good. In fact, let me go ahead and just instantly put him on oratory focus. This is going to be an anti-tyranny consulship. No tyranny is going to be gained in this consulship. And I am swearing on the Black Stone or whatever it's called. I'm swearing on all the gods of Roma. No tyranny expenditure. If if I have to decide between mortal peril and like my soul being condemned to Hades or spending tyranny, I am going straight to Erebus. It is no question. Go on to oration focus, I suppose. Lots of stuff to deal with, but that's going to have to wait for the next episode of the Rome campaign. A very, um, at this point, sort of slowing down in the pace, I feel, but we have a lot of tyranny to kind of work through, and I just need to get things under control, especially with these Cordiscians. Whatever the case, that's going to be it for this episode of the Rome campaign. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.